Yeah, you look a little bit blurry there, Ken. But that Do might I? just be a little bit, yeah. Okay. I could reboot my phone if need be. You've had too much to drink. Your face is all blurry. <laughs> is it? <laughs> no, that seems a lot better now. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good look for you, Ken. Listen up, Vegas. Welcome to the slaughterhouse. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the slaughterhouse. I'm your host, Cezal Phoenix, and with me today are my international heroes, Ken from Toy Connections, Steve from G.I. Joe Berg, and my very special guest, Brian, a.k.a. Hooded Cobra Commander 788. Welcome, guys. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Pumped! <laughs> oh, wait, did I hit record? <laughs> yeah. it says live right there in the corner <laughs> perfect well welcome to the show brian welcome back to the show guys uh it's great to have you all on uh it's actually a surreal experience for me uh being that uh two two people here uh hcc788 and gi joeberg uh i pretty much discovered your channels on must be within the same week at least um, I was going back through, as I started collecting Joes again, I was going back to check out some of the reviews on, on classic O-Ring Joes, just so I could get some of that nostalgia feeling back. And one of the first ones that I saw was the video that you and Steve did together, where it was Alpine going up against Hit and Run. So, yeah, and that's Rematch. how I discovered G.I. Joeberg there, so... <clears throat> Terrific. Uh, takes me back, doesn't it, Brian? Jeez. Yeah, that was fun. Um, and uh, I have to say, I'm, I'm a pretty big uh, G.I. Joe Berg fan. I've uh, kept up with theirs. Now, I, I did spend about a year away from uh, the community, but I'm getting back into it. And now i got to get ca caught up on G.I. Joe Berg episodes. So that, that gives me plenty to watch and listen to. <laughs> well, welcome back, Brian. Thank you. That, Don't feel obligated, thing. Brian. Uh, no. <laughs> we, we we talk a lot. Did, did you we never shut about up. Me? Are you are you trying? You said something about me, didn't you? Uh, no, 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 not at all. All right, all right. Mm. It's like okay. farting and hoping recommend. nobody smells it, right? Uh, <laughs> you know, it's uh, no. I was just saying, uh, HCC is a household name uh, in the GI Joe community. You can't really talk about GI Joe without dropping your name and your content so of course you've been spoken of very fondly uh during your hiatus brian but you're back i'm back all is well all is well again yes all is well ish at least better it's it's better i speak it's for it. us your adoring fans more than anything else all is well in the, in the universe now that we have uh, a hooded cobra commander review uh popping up in our news feed every now and then right some absolutely now back to the gi joe collection community Yep. And he's got a very distinct voice. So it's like when we hear that voice again after not hearing it for a while, it's like, you know, the return of, I don't know, return of the Mac. I don't know what, what else to, what else to call it. I'm not sure what else to kind of Didn't do. know that I'd be back. There we go. There you go. I, I, yeah. man, I, I just, you, maybe you, other people have the same experience, but it's, I cannot stand the sound of my own voice. And I have to edit my own videos and listen to myself. I'm like, oh. But uh, thank you. Thank you for, for, for listening. I appreciate it. Uh, I want to bring up, uh, Brian, your, your quest for Joe Fest 2022. Uh, if you want to tell us a little bit about uh, what that quest entails for you. Uh, yes. So, um, yeah, we haven't done conventions for a while for obvious reasons. Uh, but it looks like, at least maybe, knock on wood, we can safely do that uh, this year, we hope. Uh, I went to Joe Fest in 2019. For those who don't know, you know, there was an official G.I. Joe convention, Joe Con, that they did every year. Uh, but that was discontinued. Um, and uh, that was the role of like the big annual G.I. Joe convention was kind of taken over by uh, Joe Fest in Augusta, Georgia. And uh, there are lots of regional shows, but kind of the fan community sort of lashed on to Joe Fest as the the big one that we all try to go to if, if we can. And um, yeah, I went to uh, the convention to Augusta in 2019. Uh, it was a fantastic experience. That's where I first met Sergeant Slaughter. And nice. I did notice the shirt and the signature on there. Yeah. Um, and um, 
you know, this is the first time I had a table at a convention and it was amazing. It went really well. And I met a ton of people. It was a great honor to meet everyone. Uh, it was very humbling and flattering to have people come and, uh, and talk to me. And I really miss that experience. I miss that kind of uh, personal face-to-face -face connection with the community. So I am attempting to do that again this year. Um, of course, you know, pandemic willing, but I, again, with proper precautions. But uh, yeah, so essentially the only way that I can realistically do it right now with, um, you know, the economy and finances being what they are is to get help. So I've got a GoFundMe started uh, and uh, we'll hopefully get to Augusta this year in June. What I did last time and what I hope to do this time is kind of use Joe Fest as sort of a sneak peek and a launching point for Cobra Convergence, which should happen in July. So Joe Fest at the end of June, kick off Cobra Convergence at the beginning of July. So okay. that's the goal. And um, and I hope we can do it. Um, I, I am not someone who um, often asks for help. I, I it's a very difficult for, thing for me to do. Asking for help is, is not easy, but this is a situation where if I'm going to do it, I, I do need help. So okay. yeah, well, we'll, we will see if we can make it to Joe Fest this year. We're going to do our best. And um, if we make it, we're going to, we're going to do the, we're, we're going to really make something special out of it. We'll have some, um, uh, we'll, we'll have some original artwork there. Uh, we'll have some, uh, some meetups. We'll hang out together. Uh, we will talk about GI Joe and, you know, we'll, we'll kind of be a community again, as much as mm. it realistically can be right now. Right. And that's, that's what's really matters to me. So if the, well, uh, yeah. masks, if the masks become mandatory during that time, I, I imagine there's going to be a lot of Cobra troopers and ninjas about uh, yeah. perfect, perfect excuse. Work. Yeah. Make so, it work. That's right. Yeah, so yeah, we're, and you're going to have a card. Playing. You're going to have a card for everyone to sign again, like you did at the previous one. Yeah, that was one of the best things. That that is my um, my most precious souvenir uh, from all of my GI Joe convention experiences is, you know, that that card that was signed by by everybody. And uh, yeah, I absolutely want to do that again this year. A fresh card, just come by. You might need a bigger card. It. There wasn't a lot of room left on your old one. Yeah, it was. You had to sign pretty small, uh, but uh, yeah, let's just get more signatures. Um, the um, I, I, I was able to meet uh, GI Joe Berg, including Stephen at JoeCon. Uh, I was able to meet a lot of people who are, I think, now lifelong friends. And uh, for a lot of people, going to conventions is a lot about getting you know, con exclusives, getting toys that you can't get any, anywhere else. For me, it's about meeting people like Steve um and uh and friends that I, I don't really get to see in person very often that's what it means to me and that's what i really want to get back to um so, i will say that um and I, I apologize um i just thought of something else that i think is important that i want to do when i was when i first started going to joe con i found it very difficult to connect with people um i just didn't know anybody and nobody knew me uh and as time went on over the years, I made some friends. And um, by the last JoeCon, I, I knew lots of people. But I do know that sometimes it can be intimidating for somebody who's new um, to make those connections. And mm -hmm. um, basically, I want everyone who's new, everyone who's uh, going to their first G.I. Joe convention, everyone who doesn't know anyone, just come and see me. Just come and see me. Come and talk with me. We will connect. Right. We will talk about all the toys that we love. We will have a great time. We'll hang out in the hotel bar after the show, and we will we'll we'll make those connections. I will help you make those connections. I'll introduce you to everyone, uh, and we'll have we'll have a great year. We'll have a, we're gonna, we'll have a great convention. That's really good. That's really good that you're uh, focusing on the people aspect of it, uh, and less about uh, you know the material side of things. You know, bringing the fans together to be fans together. So that's really good. So the does Joe Fest have exclusive figures like Joe Con did or no? Not officially um, exclusive, but a lot of vendors create their own exclusives. So like Scorch, I can't say it, Scorch, Scorch Earth Earth Productions Initiative. Um, yeah. did a, a yeah. yeah, did an unmasked um, uh, Snake Eyes figure uh, in right. 2019. Uh, yeah. There was like a, a night force wolverine yeah. um so 
yeah, yeah. There are there are exclusives. They're not like official Hasbro released, but they are mm -hmm. they're really awesome. They're like really nicely done. And I have one of those unmasked snake eyes, and it's just unbelievable. Yeah, I, I think Brian Cosine actually did a couple of Sergeant Slaughter's. He did the Tiger Force one, then he did the Evil one. I can't remember which was an exclusive for what, but I did, you know, manage to get those after the convention. And he also did the Overkill colored bats one year. I think that was 2019. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's how that is. And Brian, you know, don't feel bad at all about the GoFundMe. I mean, you know, a lot of people in the community feel that you've given a lot to us in the social media space since 2015 or so. Even though this is the first time I get to talk to you, giving a little bit back to you is not, you know, I, I wouldn't consider it a, a burden as, you know, an individual at all. Just sure. wanted yeah. to make sure you knew that. Thank you. Yeah. It's it's kind of just the way I was raised. Like, it. It's hard to uh, ask help when, uh, uh, even when I very clearly need help. And, you know, here I very clearly need help. So I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to um, ask when I need it. So uh, I hope we can do it. And if, if we can do it, I, I want to make it worth it to everyone. I'll, I'll, make a, I'll make a convention video out of it. I'll get as many people in it as I can. Um, I'll, uh, I'll bring stuff. Uh, and, um, yeah, I, I want to see everyone again. I miss, uh, I miss that personal connection and it's just, it's just been too long. Yeah. And it's a road um, trip with your daughter too. Yeah. So that's that's the plan. Um, uh, yeah. So the way the timing works out, um, I should be bringing my daughter as well. Uh, you know, she's a teenager, so she will have no interest in it whatsoever, but like, she'll be forced to hang out with old dad. That's, you know, that's. <laughs> punishment for something i guess i'll, I'll come up sure. with something that that's a punishment for um but uh, yeah it's um it, hopefully it'll also be a way for me and and my kid to kind of connect and uh, mm. that's a nice thing too um we, we with school and you know teenagers are busy and got their own things so it, sometimes it's hard to have that kind of family time with a kid that age so uh one way to do it is to force them to sit in a car <laughs> yeah Isn't give them their tablet yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, you know, I, I got no problem. I mean, I, I'm going to log into the GoFundMe sometime this weekend and I'm going to try to help you out as well because, you know, um, not everybody knows this, but I mean, within the first conversation of me um, talking to Brian, I mentioned my flag video and how he, you know, um, I would never have been able to assemble it without his. Um, no response. Five minutes later, he shares it on his. Doesn't, I, you know, I, I didn't even ask. And he goes ahead and shares it just because the sense of community is just kind of built into you as a person and right. getting that yeah. out there. And it's, yeah. And, and for those who don't have their own YouTube channel, I mean, the analytics are very important and that, that video did not show up in my top videos for months. And then all of a sudden there were like 30 views in like a very, very short period of time. And I, somebody tagged me and said, hey, did you know the hooded Cobra commander shared your video? I'm like, Oh my God. And even though he saw my message, <laughs> right. Yeah, right. And, so and I, that was, I apologize I really actually for not uh, responding in a timely manner. I have a hard time with that, but I did like the video and I wanted to share that. And that's, that's exactly the kind of thing that, that I like to share. Um, I, I like seeing that kind of thing. I like people creating now there's a lot of GI Joe product out there right now, but um, it, that was not the case a very short time ago. And essentially all that G.I. Joe had was us. There were no movies. There were no classified line. There was just us people uh, creating things about G.I. Yeah. Joe and we were it. So, um, yeah, that, that sense of, uh, bond with the community, I think, um, was, was, um, what kind of kept things going for a while. So I love to see people creating uh, videos about the, the USS flag. I, I love seeing like uh, Joburg continuing to, to go on. Uh, Sergeant Slaughter's Slaughterhouse. Th this is tons of fun. I love seeing this. So, um, yeah, I've been out of it for a little while. As I mentioned, you know, I was, I was kind of out of the game for a while. But I'm getting back in and I'm discovering that there are more people creating. And that's really exciting. And I'm having a great time discovering more people doing more about G.I. Joe and, and other things, you know, other toys that they love. But just sharing something that you enjoy. And that is that's a super cool thing to me. So I'm, I'm, I'm really glad to see it. Appreciate 100 agree with you on that one. Uh, there's uh, three out of four of us here have done a video on the flag. I'm uh, the most I have is the box. I've got the box of a flag that was gifted to me uh, from someone who who had the flag. So excuse me, you have the box. You have the box. 
Just the box, flat packed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, <sighs> I don't have the box. I don't have the I box. Love, I would love to have that. As I a table. bought the box with my flag. Yeah, but because of the postal service dimensions, the seller was like, "I can cut it in half and Ooh. send it to you like that. It it can't be sent to South Africa with these dimensions." I was like, "Oh." Then keep it. Yeah. But I that feel cheated to this day that I yeah, paid for yeah. a box along with my flag. It's a, it's a majestic thing. It's, yeah. uh, it is. It's it worth really is. money now. Like yeah. back when I bought my flag, it was like, oh, pff, what, whatever. I need the plastic, not the cardboard. But well, yeah. Plastic. You know, the cool thing The cool thing about the, the flag is, I mean, Steve, you did one that showed how to raise the flag, like how to get it up. And then Brian did a video. <laughs> and one of the first things Brian says on the video is, okay, I don't recommend putting this on a floor. Set it on a table. I look around my uh -huh. house. I don't have a table. So what's the first yeah. thing I do? I put it on the floor. I go on my belly and I'm trying to listen to Brian talk <laughs> while I'm like pushing this here and pulling that there. And like the first thing he said is don't put it on the floor. And what do I do? I put it on the damn floor. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the that, 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 uh, that assembly video, the, what prompted that is that when I got the flag, I didn't have enough room for it and I had to keep assembling it and disassembling it over and over and i'm like this is hard and if it's hard for me i'll bet it's hard for other people so you know yeah. given that i've now had to do this several times next time i put it together i'm just i'll just set up the camera so i'm, I'm glad that's helpful but um but joeberg's video very influential video uh was really helpful about like yeah you can get a flat table like i have or you can do something even cooler and create right. the whole thing Make a skateboard. with all of the things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it rolls. Yep. And then he made it float. And then he put it in the ocean. Madness. That, Madness. That's where my jaw dropped. I'm like, oh, my God. He put it. Did you actually put this? Oh, my God. He did. Like, that's what I was doing when I was watching that video. And this I'm like, I don't know whether to be scared for you or not. He's doing voiceovers <laughs> for Shipwreck, I, I think, and, and all that. And I'm like, oh, my God. I'm scared for him. But I'm so excited. I can't take my eyes off the screen right now. So. <laughs> I, Look at my beard, man! I am shipwreck. Like, Where's my teacup <laughs> yeah, hat? Special effects. That's all you need. I don't know. I don't know who I could be. Quick kick? I don't know. Take your uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have the six that's pack though. That's low hanging fruit though, Ken. Yeah, I don't. I don't yeah. have a six pack, so you know, be Ryu or something. I I have Sweet. mine already built in. I don't have to worry about working out. <laughs> Mine's built into this thing. <laughs> you kidding? Is that a padded suit, Zazel? Yeah, mate. It's got it's got the six no. pack down here. <laughs> Oh, that's for real. Yeah. I thought you were joking when you said you had that. This is what I don't. I don't have this as my everyday wear. <laughs> this was part of a yeah. Halloween costume that had um, the campaign cover, um, oh, yeah. the glasses, and everything. The campaign cover came bent and it was like some sort of plastic. And I, I messaged the seller and I said, "Hey, the 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 hat's like well bent out of shape." And he goes, oh, you just have to heat it up and then it'll go back to normal. I was like, that's not going to happen. It's got it's got crease marks. It's got stress marks in it. There's no way this thing's going back uh, into its right shape. But anyway, I still wear the hell out of this. In pictures with other wrestlers, no less, um, which is why like, I never realized it had like muscles built into it because of the company you keep when I see photos. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it looks like you're a regular size man <laughs> next to those. Well, you monsters. never, you, a regular, what am I, what am I if I'm not that? <laughs> <laughs> you, need, you need lifts in your boots like a regular you know, size yourself... man right uh -huh. yikes so, <laughs> yeah so yeah. uh before yeah. we push on to the main topics i just want to know uh brian and steve if you guys still stand by your arguments as far as alpine and hit and run are concerned well i can tell you right now out of those two figures one of them came with me to exile in Australia, and the other did not. So, what do you think, Zays? That's it. Oh, yeah. So no need for a round two. What about you, Brian? <laughs> um, I, I think so, but, um, you know, I, I haven't actually done a full review on Alpine yet, and I need to, so maybe I'll revisit that in the near future. I, I, I need to give it some more thought. It, um, it, was, it was a friendly debate, a friendly discussion. Um, and I thought there were good points on all sides, mostly on my side, but on all sides. Good points. Uh, no, but it was, it was uh, good camo paint on my side. Yeah, Steve, you really put yeah, the effort in as far as coming out of the water and doing your review in the water. Uh, that that was impressive. I, I won't deny that. 
But uh, yeah, I, I think I think I need to take a closer look at Alpine. Alpine is a fascinating figure, and uh, so yeah, maybe Albert Pine needs uh, needs his own review in the near future. I'll, well, I'll, I'll revisit it, and we'll we'll see how we still feel about it. Perfect. Sounds that, good to me. I think I think Form BX two five seven ruined that figure for me, which is why I I promptly wanted to to challenge you on the topic because he said that uh, he said something that once you see it you cannot unsee it that he looks like a civilian kind of costume choice wardrobe choice done up in military colors that's like yeah, yeah you're absolutely right Kevin that is a fair point well I think the modern Al Alpine figure is wearing shorts so <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> apparently they, they took that you know and ran with it um mm -hmm. but yeah no i that's 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 totally uh true um the, from just like a, a an action figure production perspective though the number of paint applications on alpine is absurd it's like uh, like lovingly detailed and colored and like, man, they put a lot of effort into this thing. And for a character that was like a B character, uh, he had some moments, you know, in, in the animated series, he had a few mm. moments in, uh, in the comic book, but uh, you know, not an A-lister, but the, that had to have taken up a big chunk of the, uh, the figure budget for that year. Uh, Not to mention the accessory incredible. count. I was going to say, a lot yeah. of accessories, oh. the, the thread, yeah. the two hooks you always lose. <laughs> or None of that effort was put <laughs> into his name, though. That was the most simplest name choice. <laughs> Al, yep. Albert, Albert, Pong. that's it. Mm. <laughs> Easy to remember. Uh -huh. Well, if it's true that you don't choose your own code names, that someone in, in, the, in the Joe team kind of awards you a code name that was a pretty easy stretch for whoever sure, came up with yeah. that. nobody worked hard on that one snake eyes could have come up with that one <laughs> <laughs> silent <laughs> ninja and all <laughs> write it down all right well let's kick off into our first topic which is pitch your own sub team now uh i'll go first we'll move on to brian down to steve and then over to ken that's just the uh the rotation I've got on my screen. I don't know if that is the same for you guys, but well, that's, that's, that's the clockwise. It. That's the clockwise rotation, so that works. Perfect. You that's know? what we're going to do then. Right. So pitch <laughs> your own sub team. Now, I know you guys aren't, except for Ken, obviously, aren't as into wrestling as we are. But I could not help myself in this regard to add a little bit of wrestling flavor into my sub team. Now, a uh, little bit of backstory before I go into it. Um, my, my initial thought when I was going through this was uh, they, they branched out into, uh, G.I. Joe branched out into Street Fighter and then to a lesser extent uh, Mortal Kombat but without the added uh, G.I. Joe insignias on there. And I thought around about the same time that Sergeant Slaughter stopped being a G.I. Joe, Hasbro picked up the licensing to make wrestling figures. And they made their own line of figures um, that were a lot less articulated. Uh, a lot of a lot of fans are, are into them, uh, as they were the LJN that preceded them. But what if they, as the Hasbro execs, thought, well, you know, we're uh, we've got we've got the the tooling. Let's let's start putting some of this uh, action figure. Um, G.I. Joe scale O-ring designs into producing these wrestling figures. So that's what I've come up with. I've come up with a line. Um, it would, Sarge would have still been a part of G.I. Joe, but as he was going back into wrestling, he, he became a heel, uh, which is the, the bad guy. And he became a bad guy uh, calling himself Drill Sergeant Slaughter uh, in, in those initial vignettes. And so I've elected to continue down that path. And so in that line, I have heel versus heroes, drill sergeant slaughter with bonus title ring. So the title ring is an accessory quite like the command ring. And that is literally a command ring uh, up there. So uh, the command ring can fit around the waist and it would be one of those things where you can have it on the figure or you can have it or you can wear it. 
quite like the, uh, if you remember the 90s Wolverine figure that had a mask that you could also wear as a ring. This yep. will be a, a title belt that you could either have on them or you could wear it as a ring as, as part of that accessory. So Hill versus Heroes, you'd be getting, uh, you know, popular people in the time would have been uh, Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior. Uh, you would Macho have Ted Dibiase, Macho Man for sure. Uh, Jake the Snake. Um, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't do it without Roddy Piper, who, who later on did get his own figure. And you got to mention the goat. You got to mention the goat. Well, that all depends on who your version of the goat is. Got, <laughs> I'm looking at mine right now. <laughs> Bret Hart. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, Bret Hart. Yeah, sure. Bret Hart would have come a little bit later down the line, I think. Um, and then we've got probably the Undertaker would have been in there. And yes. we could also throw in, in wave one, uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, who could now be really, you know, sitting there. It could be uh, other than Hulk Hogan, who probably would have been the face of the line uh him and uh and hacksaw jim duggan would have been waving the american flag and you know you can try and tie it into gi joe uh or you can have it as its own thing but uh oh and the the card i i slapped a few pictures on this this card was presented to me in a blank form uh by magnificent kaboom who does All some right. great cartoons and pictures for me uh, he sent this over and i was able to slap some of my own images on there uh, but yeah, so hills versus heroes. So I've got a, I've got that. And uh, as far as um, I don't think any vehicles would have been in the line necessarily, unless it was one of those miniature rings that sort of rolled into uh, the, the 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 main arena. But I also think maybe they could have a playset which would be qu quite similar to the playsets that they have now for modern wrestling. I do have some other images. I decided to do some mock ups. So we've got right. heel Sergeant Slaughter with his uh, swagger stick, combat helmet, and his title belt, which just so happens to have his face on it. Whether or not, <laughs> whether or not the uh, the title belts would have had the wrestlers' faces on them, or they would have been, you know, actual title belts, either Intercontinental Championship or something like that. I'm not sure. Uh, that's up to the the Hasbro execs to figure out and get back to me on that one. Uh, I've got him. That's now. I thought this was a good shot, but then I thought that's really poor uh, angle for him to be holding. Uh, I tried to get him to hold his uh, title belt, but it's instead it looks like he's about to uh, upset the audience. <laughs> and then last, <laughs> <laughs> last we have the uh, the the bending of the swagger stick, uh, which he was it was known to do. And that's my uh, that's my that's my sub team pitch, and then they would have led on to possibly you know Street Fighter and so forth from there. The first vehicle pick that uh, popped into my mind was that bloody Fort America. Yeah, if you yeah. if you reconfigured the interior to just just be an empty space, mm. it could be like you know an APC and then unfolds into a, a, a tight little ring. That actually is <laughs> not a bad idea. Very good. Like a training nice. like a training area. Yeah. Or that, yeah. I mean, it's so random that that thing becomes what, like an alleyway? It becomes like right. a like right. a piece of 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 city. You could like literally a, do an alley wall. fight with that. I think I think it looks good until it's transformed, and then it just sort of doesn't look like anything. anything. No, yeah. sure. <laughs> I don't know if anyone yeah. ever watched the DIC cartoon episode that featured those things. I know I, I haven't. Was... I haven't caught up on it quite as much as uh, featuring those. I forget the episode. I, I I've watched the the Deek. Uh, is it Deek or DIC? I don't know how how we say it. But, uh, uh, I, I I tend not Deke to say Deek. Mm, yeah. yeah, no, but uh, I, I don't know. I don't want to upset the audience. But I think it's the episode, um, the Greatest Evil Part Two, the one okay. that deals with with the headman and the drugs. GI Joe oh, sneak up yeah. on his headquarters, his urban yeah. center, using those uh, Fort Americas. Because I remember like, it. I remember it now. As, Right. That was that was a two part that was a two part episode and Falcon was exactly. very heavily poor old Falcon that. couldn't cut a break. No, and he uh, Duke making deals with the devil. I mean, it was a, a team up between him and a Crimson Guard mm. to yeah. take down the Crimson, Crimson Guard number one, from what I recall, specifically. Oh, very good. One. Not oh. not not Fred series or anything. He just they were numbered like anyway. Well, that must be a contender for laziest name uh, along with <laughs> Albert Pine. But bravo, Zazel. I, I feel a bit sheepish about even speaking to this topic now because that presentation was superb. I want wrestling well, figures now, and I'm not even a fan. 
Well, I, can, uh, I know a guy who can help. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> so I've been, the, the idea, I mean, obviously being a Sergeant Slaughter fan, I wanted to keep Sergeant Slaughter in the line, but the timeline had him leaving and then coming back to the WWF. And because I've been putting together my own sort of custom, lazy custom part swap, uh, wrestling figures of my own, um, it just, you know, it would have been a, a heck of a lot easier if they were just readily available at that scale. Anyway, that's all from that, unless anyone wants to add to it. Well, I, uh, really it, nice I, I will of, try. I won't try. Yeah. <laughs> I heard that was a really nice use of a, a, a Sergeant Savage helmet. Very yes. Nice. Yeah. It fits perfectly. It fits perfectly. And it's got the uh, the insignia on it, which also helps. That's I don't um, I don't use the removable campaign cover for my um, one of my warthog sergeant slaughters. I use that one. I just feel like he if he's going to be in that behemoth of a tank, he, he's going to need a helmet rattling around in there. So I uh, I put that on him instead. I think it looks great. Yeah. But thank you very much. Highly recommended for anyone that wants to pick up a Sergeant Savage figure to throw that helmet on Sarge. All right, so Brian, we have your sub team. I'll bring that okay. up for you. Um, all right, I can't I can't top that. So what I was thinking is like, first of all, a lot of the sub teams that you can think of are kind of already taken. You have your night force, you have your ninja force, um, you know, everybody else is day force, right? So um so what I started thinking was like, who would have to be part of GI Joe, but is not obviously featured anywhere else. And that would be the support staff. Uh, and there has to be a support staff, right? For a, a team of this size, they can't do everything themselves. Uh, they, they're essentially never depicted in the comic book series. I, not that I know of, like the pit, it seems to be only populated with GI regular Joes like GI Joe, uh, team members. But, you know, um, even if Roadblock is your cook because he likes doing it, he has to go off on missions. So like nobody cooks when Roadblock's there. No, they'll have somebody <laughs> to do that. And um, yeah, you've got some images of some guys over here who have as their secondary military specialty, essentially support staff roles. Uh, Fast Draw is a clerk typist and mainframe is essentially the IT guy. Um, uh, uh, psych out is a uh, counselor, uh, spirit is social services and doc is a uh, chaplain's assistant, although they didn't have a chaplain, but they would probably have a chaplain. Um, now these guys probably don't rate their own code name and, uh, probably wouldn't get an action figure, but they sometimes got action figures such as these guys. I mean, mainframe is not necessarily a, a frontline combat troop, but he got an action figure and I think if you were, you know, in the pit as a uh, part of the support staff for GI Joe, those guys probably would band together, right? Because, you know, they're supporting this super elite uh, military unit. They have to have uh, really um, high level classified uh, clearance, top secret clearance to even do that job, but they're not going out in the field. You know, they're meeting each other, you know, in the mess hall or for cards afterwards. So they probably would band together. And uh, so that that's my team. It's the unsung heroes, most of which wouldn't get action figures. Um, and given that G.I. Joe likes to just put the word force on the back end of all of their uh, their sub teams name uh, names, I call them the chair force. Uh, no vehicles, <laughs> uh, only play sets and it's all desks. Um, so maybe their vehicles uh, could be, not, uh, not those desk running. chairs with wheels on them. Yeah. So yeah. Um, but, but they have missiles that pop out. Um, so sure. <laughs> yeah, that, I think that's my pitch for the sub team, sub team, the unsung heroes that are absolutely vital for GI Joe to function as a team. Uh, they can't all, you know, uh, fill all of those roles. You know, mm -hmm. if, if psych out is out on a mission, but somebody, needs a counseling session. They can't just like, well, what if a psych out doesn't come back? You know, he, he could be killed in the field. Cool. So they just have, to, so they have to have somebody doing that. Um, so yeah, those are, that's my sub team. Um, and uh, I, I think it's, I think it's going to be a big seller. I, I really feel like this is, if I don't get that in the classified line, then it's, I essentially, I, I quit GI Joe. I, I want uh, six inch classified chair force. 
I love the name so chair, would chair you, force. Chair force. Would you have them in in these colors as a sub team, or would you change the colors? Would you change the bodies? Make them more. You, you know, um, I, I know that especially fans of 90s G.I. Joe, they like their bright colors. Uh, in reality, they'd probably just be wearing, you know, standard army uniforms or whatever branch of service they have. But that's we can't have that. Like so they've got, we've got to tart it up a little bit. We got to we got to jazz it up a little bit. So I'm going to put them all in uh, in neon orange and green. Uh, they're on base. It's safe. <laughs> they don't have to camouflage for anything. Sure. Um, everybody yeah. will carry a sidearm and a spring-loaded missile launcher. Uh, it's going to be really difficult to fit that through the hallways and the doorways because they, again, they're just on the base <laughs> all the time. Um, but GI Joe headquarters has been attacked several times. Uh, uh, they've been attacked an amazingly large number of times for a, a super secret headquarters. Um, so yeah, right. they, they just pitch in. You know when you know. Uh, this week, headquarters is being attacked again. I guess you know, grab your grab your giant missile launcher, and here we go. So yeah, I think I, I feel I feel good about this. I feel that um, we need to write into Hasbro and make this happen. Well, I mean, yeah. I love it. I, you've ticked the box by having an yeah. animal companion be a part of it. Uh, that's always a bonus when you've got a sub team. Uh, I think yep. makes what Spirit's third, uh, and also Mainframe's third sub team. Uh, if uh, I, yeah, if so I yeah it, they put them on the sub teams because they they just need a they need a computer guy. Everybody needs a computer guy. Yeah. Well, there we are. It works. Oh, I'm down. I like it. And there's nothing wrong with wearing a necktie into battle too. Your Colonel Courage does that just fine. You just tuck it in and off <sighs> right. you go. Yeah. Yeah, and see, in reality, they would all basically be dressed like Colonel Courage, but. Hey, hey, that right. for economical purposes, you just do different heads. Mm -hmm. Put them all on Colonel Courage's body. It's it, it's done. Done. Have different so accessories coming out. Different in colored briefcase. Your rocket firing. Case. Yes. Must have the rocket firing. <laughs> rocket firing. Right, anyone else want to add? Year two add to dial that? tone joins the team. Dial tone joins the team in year two. Yeah. And you. we get a version one finally of Sparks from the Sunbow yeah, cartoon. Yeah. See, mm -hmm. yeah, and it like the animated series had these extra guys, you know? They did. The comic book didn't really have them so much. Yes. Spinning up from that idea, Brian, I think that each of the guys up on screen now basically needed a staff. I mean, the, we've got Doc. He's a doctor. Uh, yeah. But he has no nurses. He has no mm -hmm. other doctors. He has no no staff. He can't be the be all and end all. And once right. again, these aren't figures that are going to fly off shelves or even be produced. But you know, I look at a figure like Tollbooth. He looks mm. dressed like the foreman, but yeah. he needs some guys. He needs some labor guys. You know, he needs a team to do what he needs getting done. Um, so each Joe that has a rather unique specialty, like the guys up on screen now, they need their men and women under them. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's it's a it's a very valid point to to fill these holes. But as we say, they're never going to get made. We need a bunch of dudes with machine guns, not a yeah. bunch of guys with <laughs> pencils. <laughs> but see, that's why I think it's it's extraordinary that some of these did get made. Like you, you have the computer guy. Are you. They made a computer guy. Now they're probably not going to make, you know, the, the receptionist and uh, like the third cook's assistant, but uh, right. still, you know, th those guys are there. They exist. It always begs the question: Do they become official GI Joe members? Are they card carrying Joes? Is every sailor manning the USS flag considered a Joe? I, that's a really blurs the line. Question. Yep. In the quite... comic book series, um, they had to go through like this extremely rigorous training program, and I can't imagine all Only of them. Only by that. 1988, I oh. must add. Um, Larry details in one of his declassified books in Devil's Due era how the original 13 got recruited for G.I. Joe, and they yeah. didn't have to do what Repeater, mm. uh, Lightfoot, Budo. 
what those guys yeah. had to do. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm glad say, somebody mentioned the Devil's were... Do. Devil's yeah, Do well, was an underrated run, but that's a whole other conversation. So underrated. And shout outs to uh, the guys from Anything Joe's who have been doing um, some some reviews of those books that I speak of right now. And at, by the same token, gosh, I could I could go on, but Talking Joe has also sunk their teeth quite heavily into into the Devil's Due stuff. So check them out. So uh, to, to that then, do yes. the, are the green shirts uh, in, in the animated series, are they considered G.I. Joe? Or are they, other than Grunt, who is the ultimate green shirt, are, and are then they... By the same token, what about these guys? See, I see you as a G.I. Joe. Exactly. See, I, I see those uh, the Steel Brigade as essentially undifferentiated uh, troops, um, but they are troops. They are, they are combat troops. They are armed uh, Heaven they, help us know. if we try and army build them uh, to fulfill those right. background, you know, those backup. Well, no, roles. because the green shirts in my mind, if you get the 94 action soldier or the 98 mm. action soldier, that is my green shirt. And then I get the action Marine with his pattern. And to me, he's the action force Z force green shirt. That's what kind of what I do. But that's just me trying to be imaginative, but at the same time, abuse kind of what's out there already. So. Anyway, right, but are, are they Joes though? Is the question. Are they Joes? Or are they just oh. manning the, the base? Yeah, it depends don't... on how much budget they've the delta, like whatever the delta number for Joes is, depends on how much budget they've got, right? Mm. <laughs> it, it's a little paradoxical um, because, well, I, I'm a fan of Larry's comic book series, uh, but there are some, in some respects, the animated series made. A little more sense uh, in that they did have the green shirts and you, you would need uh, uh, troops like that. Uh, for the most part, you're doing like small unit anti-terrorism missions. But, you know, they had the Cobra Island Civil War where they, you know, went en masse to Cobra Island to fight, you know, more traditional large unit uh, warfare. So uh, you, you'd need guys. You need troops for that. So, yeah, having green shirts for something like that, I think, makes total sense. Um, so, yeah, but are they Joes? I think that's a good question. I think if you are in the Larry Hamaverse, probably not. But if you're in, you know, the Sunbow era animated series, probably, I think so. But it's not. Until you get a file card, question. maybe no. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, in the Devil's Do Run, during the America's Elite portion, they did have the active reservist status, right? So they could maybe find a way to, to, to wean that in somehow. Anyway, it sounds like we've got a greater conversation going potentially with the comics as well. Like, I haven't read much of the IDW, and I've only read a handful of issues for Marvel, so would love to, you know extend that in, conversation at some point in the sunbow series all you had if they picked you up in a bar you, congratulations you're a joe so right, uh, right. By that standard, yeah they're probably all jokes yeah fair enough fair true, enough too true all right, right steve you've you've got uh your sub team ready to yes well look i i think we've kind of dovetailed into it already um so i'm actually going to nominate it a different one but i just want to say on the point of specialized personnel to operate gi joe equipment like that's a big hole that could be filled by by fig something that absolutely demands a figure i look at a vehicle like the rolling thunder and i see gunner positions that could be filled by infantrymen sure but then i see very specialized positions that like unless you know a thing or two about ballistic missiles uh, you should not rate being in that seat uh, the Defiant, holy hell! You think Hardtop can run the entire launch of a of a ship of you know, spacecraft? Forget about it. Um, you need very specialized guys, and the tip of the iceberg <laughs> has been this latest Haslab, because we're getting a backseat man for our Sky Striker at long, sure. long last. Um, Wayne Ruthel, it, that can't. Yep divulge the code name just yet i don't know it's been stuck in in legal for too long um but we call him affectionately peter pilot uh, i don't know if you recall good old airplane anyways so that has alerted us to the fact that hasbro does seem to be aware of the need for these additional um operators mm. the fact that we have now well at least the possibility of getting deck crew 
Yes, yeah, I was gonna say, man, flag. we almost got that. We were like, what, well, we are, away? we are getting the Cobra equivalent. That's we a are. new specialty that has never been fulfilled. Yes, and my goodness, is that gonna look so good in front of a rattler? Like, you know, these are diorama possibilities that only existed as customs up until now, but now we're getting official Hasbro plastic, so they're aware. They're going to start oh, peddling yeah. the stuff, even if they're total Frankenjoes. And let's be fair, that's, you know, that's a smart business move. And why wouldn't these guys just need basic uniforms with a few embellishments on the, the front torso piece? Um, but that is a sub team just waiting to happen, like vehicle specialists. You can have an armor specialist who can kind of look good in any ground vehicle. You can have an aerial specialist who has flight mask, all that jazz. But Ken, I absolutely take your point, and there are so many shoe-ins for that position. Like I was looking at the the Guile uh, movie figure, which yeah. has the the flight jacket, and I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Ah, uh, yeah. No, I've is. got a Ghost Striker X30 or X. What is it? Ghost Striker X16? No, the Ghost Striker. What is that one? The X16, the one with the flashlight in it. Anyways, it's got a back seat. <laughs> Not and... the Phantom. No. That's, that's the no, well, the Phantom, the all of these uh, two seat aircraft, you got to have a backseat, man. You got to have your goose. Yeah. Conquest. Um, I'm sick of putting actual pilots in the backseat because it's a different skill set. Yeah. It's a different okay. qualification. It's a different uh, rank as well. I mean, yeah. Anyways, let's, let's no, have it, please, a... Hasbro. That's a good point. Awesome. And, uh, and that's def- me. <laughs> <laughs> but it works. Mm. Yeah. Look, yeah. and if that's too close to 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 um, what Brian's selling, I would say that uh, the idea of the BF2K is evergreen. Um, you just got to change the name because that's hilariously out of date. Um, you could call them the Future Force, but when I was growing up, there was a, a British show called. Um, oh man, I had the name in my mind this morning. I'm blanking now. It was called. It doesn't matter what it's called. Anyways, it dealt with it was it was made in the nineties, but it was dealing with like, oh, it's called Beyond Two Thousand. That was oh uh, yeah, we used to have Beyond Two Thousand. We had that in Australia, but that would, of for I think it was around in the early late eighties, early nineties. Anyways, I was captivated by this one episode that had a segment on future weapons, and I'm like, whoa! Right. Okay, so there was an, obviously a show of the same name some years later, but. Uh, just looking slightly into the future and implementing those designs and concepts into toys, like intelligently. The designers mm. have to do their research. They can't just slap together a Flash Gordon looking spacesuit and call <laughs> it a day. Or like, oh, that guy, that looks like a guy from Aliens. So, you know, that must be futuristic. Let's uh, make that our design. <laughs> you know, integrate their greeblies that are part of their, their get up, their uniform, like make it all make sense. Mm. Like, you can have a return of the kind of the numbered, you know, blueprint style lists on the card art, like, oh, sophisticated flashbang grenade and then <laughs> dog food for your, <laughs> for your pooch. Oh, I'm looking at you, DEF mutt. Oh, man. Some of that stuff was so classy. Anyways, I've spoken too much. I'm going to mute myself. No, not at all. That's, not that's at all. Great. That was me. really good. Cheers. I'm full of them. Uh, hire me, Hasbro. Hire us. Hire <laughs> Steve's us all. got all the ideas. If this is the art research and development. Figures, if you want futuristic figures or if you want people just to man your flag, Steve's got all the ideas for you. Guys with hard hats. Just give me more guys with hard hats. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Oh, but, well, very good ideas. Uh, Ken, very. what is your pitch for a sub team, my friend? All right. So for those who do know me, the other... The other favorite toy line that I have is, other than G.I. Joe, is Transformers. And the one thing the Transformers did is they never had a year where they really stopped. Even when they said, okay, we're done Generation 1 in 1990, but they still released figures in Europe in 91. And when they said that was done, um, then 1992, they had some other figures. And 93, they re- released Generation 2. And I thought, I always thought, why couldn't G.I. Joe, like, why did they have to stop in 94? Were sales down or what? What could they do to get the market back in? All right. So I'm going to reverse what Zazel did. He had heels versus heroes. I'm going to take the heels and go heroes in heels, all girl (laughs) sub team, extend the line. What do you do when the boys aren't buying the figures? He-Man 
had Shira. So what you do is you take you take uh, Scarlet, Lady J. There you go, right? You get Jinx, you get Cover Girl, all the girls, and you make their own sub team. You hope to spin it off as much as possible. You have them go against Baroness and Zorana, who are so different because one's a gangster and one's like this, like you know, villainous countess type. And you get inter conflicts and all that. You start those as Joes. You add in the Shira hair. You slowly transition up back to the 12 inch Barbie size. You compete it with Mattel's Barbie and you've gone back to square one with 12 inch Joes, but with girls, heroes in heels. And the GI Joe line never dies in 94 and Hasbro always has. There you go. There you go. I, yeah. I, I like what Steve's got there. Yeah. And GI Joe always has Transformers and GI Joe parallel. And it's not just Transformers going off on its own because that is my pitch for a sub team heroes in heels absolutely i cannot argue with it that yeah uh, yeah back in the 80s and 90s well they, they stopped making uh women gi joes um like who was the, what was the last one we got um, jinx yeah. 87 well, was jinx well then uh, they did version two scarlet yeah. well then yeah. you did not force um lady j later on that was way later. That was in the 2000s. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. Hoodie, if, if you're referring to like an unbroken sort of token female, it stopped in 88. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah. So yeah. And Scarlet was like a version too. So yeah, that, that would have given us some female characters. I know that in the 80s and 90s, they were always concerned that, you know, uh, girl characters do not sell. But ironically, uh, girls' toy lines uh, now are still often doing quite well. So uh, it might it might have actually been a, a wise economic choice to kind of phase that into a, a girl's toy line. I think that maybe they missed the boat. They could, um, yeah. They, they tried with Gem and the holograms. They could have done it with GI Joe. They could have. I, I was, you know, when Diesel asked the question, I was looking on my shelves and I'm like, okay, well, He Man had Shira. Ah, oh. <laughs> right? right. And what did they need? What did they need to compete with? Twelve inch Barbie. So you get the hair and you slowly upsize. And in my mind. We have a much bigger market out there right now. If they had done something like that to help extend it, while the boys line, when the boys start to miss the Joes, then we bring them back, like we've done so far. You uh, do commercials where you have your girl Joes. Uh, your now, now they're larger dolls beating the crap out of your Monster High and your Brat, yep. like literally take on the competition. Mm. Yep, you do, you do. You can get a cartoon, a comic, a lot out of this, in my opinion. Right? There we a go. Four issue limited run, at least. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I think it's a great idea. Um, I think I think one of the smart things that they did for Masters of the Universe and Shira was that they 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 kept all the the bad guys in the He Man line and and had them in that in that design. And then put all the dolls in the girls' line. So while they were still integrating, integrating, is that a real word? <laughs> well, in integrating, really I think. I don't know. Integrate. Integrate. I don't know. <laughs> well, they were I'm not the grammar police. Same time. <laughs> anyway, they had they they were able to sell for a little while at least. They were able to sell both lines uh, on the, on the shelf. I can't remember uh, what what He Man they were putting out on the shelves during the time that Shearer was uh, most prominent, if they even had one. 85, like 80, 85, 86, right? So they would have probably, yeah, that, that would have been like after Battle Armor He-Man and Battle Armor Skeletor, mm. which were I think in 84, or am I getting that mixed up? Anyway. And then they went into space and, and yeah, that lost me. Well, space was later. Space was 89, I think, right? So I'm still, I, think, I was lost by then. I think. No, I, I, I got I got a brush up, right? Right, right. All right, well, Ken, that was that was great. Um, yeah, definitely uh, thinking outside the box there as far as the future of the line. Uh, yeah, I love it. Good stuff. So then I want to go on to uh, the Joes that shaped us, or uh, which figure kicked off the obsession. That could be that answer could be the both both the same figure. Uh, so I wanted to sort of merge those two questions together. Um, yeah, so the Joes that shaped us or which figure kicked off the obsession. So I'll bring up what mine was. Uh, so the, the one, the figure, the figure that I got first, or at least I remember getting first. If I get anything before this, I don't remember it. So the first one I ever got that I remember getting 
was this guy. Nice. Now I was oh, I was please. big I was big into Star Wars, big into Masters of the Universe. <clears throat> Excuse me. One moment. <laughs> big into Star Wars, big into He Man, Masters of the Universe. And so a robot fit into my collection just fine. I had no problems with mixing and matching toy lines. So I would have uh, Care Bears hanging out at uh, Castle Greyskull and, and the Masters of the Universe team. It didn't bother me. So this was just a nice robot that I could add into Star Wars or whatever, whatever I wanted to do at the time. They could kick Smurf Tail for, for all I cared. And I thought it was great because it had um, interchangeable parts, but um, I was unfamiliar with what, it was. Uh, I didn't have the cartoon readily available to me. Definitely didn't see any of the comic books. So I got a robot. And the good thing about having G.I. Joe is that you can look on the back of the of, of the card and you can see it gives you that history behind what it is, where it came from, and gives you a look at what other characters are out there. Uh, I wasn't in a position to be able to just pick and choose whoever I wanted, wherever I wanted, um, mostly because part of the reason being was that I just didn't have everything available to me. I was living in a small town, and I remember at one point my news agents that was carrying Joe's had them had lines of Joe's that weren't even available anymore in shops, just sitting there on the shelves gathering dust. So, the uh, I was uh, I ended up um, w picking up a VHS copy of GI Joe, and one of the episodes that were on that was Ninja Holiday. And in Ninja Holiday, I got to see Sergeant Slaughter, and I thought, oh, this guy's great. I'd love to get a Sergeant Slaughter, but I never did. I was never able to find one. But I was able to pick up another Marine that had a mustache, this guy, Leatherneck. Uh, I always got Leatherneck and Leatherhead mixed up when I had the two of them. Um, <laughs> and at one point, uh, when I had the Ninja Turtles bad guy, Leatherhead, uh, he, he would ride on the back of him for a while. Though. He had no thumbs by that point. Uh, his crutch was broken and he was a little loose, but he would still ride the back of, uh, of, of that crocodile. So I picked up this guy and I still, um, I, there, I had a few other options, but I picked up this guy. I wasn't really super into military stuff. Uh, I had the most I ever did. I'm like, we played cowboys, um, you know, as kids. And then we had little green army men as well, but we didn't really play army. And I had no idea about military specialty, so I didn't know what a Marine was. This guy was just a, uh, an army guy. I was like, all right, I'll, I'll pick up this guy. He's an army guy. And, yeah, he, he, he pretty much uh, kicked off the obsession from there. I, I got to see him in a, a, a smaller role, smaller capacity in that episode of um, Ninja Holiday. So I was familiar with him as a, as a character. He was on TV. That was Well, he was on video, so that was good enough for me. Uh, and and this was pretty much the if I couldn't have Sarge, this was going to be the next best thing, uh, and and that that largely kicked me off into into collecting Joe's full time. It changed. It literally changed my playing habits. I stopped playing with the Star Wars. I stopped playing with He Man, and I was just solely GI Joe now. Like for a long time, it was just GI Joe. I would dress up as Sarge. I would I would I would play around as Sergeant Slaughter. My brothers would dress up as, as you know, Quick Kick and, and Snake Eyes. And everything we did was now, for the first time, uh, military-based. Uh, wow. But then another figure that I wanted to add to the list uh, was the first figure that I remember. Hey, there's little Elliot. Hello, Elliot. Hi. Um, oh, hey. Hello. This is my son. Hello. Sorry, oh, I didn't mean to interrupt, but uh, mother good. handed him to me, so I must, <laughs> I must hold this little dude. Of course, He's very red. Here you go. Have that. Eat. Always happy to have uh, little Joe Berg on the show. <laughs> little Joe Berger. <laughs> um, Pete to daddy. Hello. Yeah. Say hi to my friends. <laughs> oh, good lunchtime. <laughs> you tried. Sorry, breaking the flow. Oh, good. It's all good. You've got, but, uh, you got to utilize those little hands. If you haven't met promotion. this dude, this is this is my guy. Almost ten months. He's getting big. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's a gift from Zazel. That tall booth. Yes, it is. 
<laughs> Dazed. Okay, Sunday morning, sir. Mm. Okay, to mommy. Hi, mom. <laughs> says, or says hi. Sorry, man. Can't resist. <laughs> <laughs> Little cameo uh, from Kim. There you go. Uh, as you were, Sarge. Apologies. Oh, no. Happy to always uh, stop for the family, mate. It's all good. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah. What I was going to say is that uh, we had many we had many GI Joes after the fact. We we picked up as many as we could. Um, a lot of the times, uh, we just we made our own backstory. Uh, the comics were starting to show up now, uh, and the figures were starting to show up a little bit more, and be more readily available. Uh, so when I finally had some pocket money uh, for myself to spend, and I got to spend it on a GI Joe that I wanted. Uh, so instead of getting it for a gift for Christmas or birthday or whatever, the first one that I picked up for myself was this guy, Chuckles. Now, the reason why I picked up Chuckles is because I could never find Duke. And I thought, this is a this is pretty close facsimile for Duke. I'll use him as like a casual Friday's Duke. And this was this was my Duke. Uh, he was never he was never Chuckles. Um, I think even after I saw G.I. Joe the movie. It was like, well, he didn't really, other than being able to pick up a, a rocket and launch it himself, he didn't really make much of an impression other than that. Oh, and sitting on top of the tomahawk and just using his uh, uh, his pistol. You know, that's, uh, you know, other than that, uh, I still needed a Duke and this guy was it. This was my Duke. And that's, uh, that's what I had. That's what kicked it off for me. Um, I think had I had an actual Sergeant Slaughter figure as a kid, uh, he would have been in here for sure. But alas, cool. I did not. Cool. So we've got um, move on to HCC Brian's. All right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, a lot of people probably know that Stalker is my favorite GI Joe character. But the one that really kicked it off was Breaker, and the first Breaker from 1982. Uh, before that, I played with a lot of Star Wars. Star Wars was king. Star Wars was everywhere. Uh, my brother and I would get, if we behaved ourselves, we would get rewarded every week with a new Star Wars action figure. And I remember going into a local uh, toy shop um, and there being just like a, a, a wall, like from uh, ceiling to floor, end to end of carded Star Wars action figures. And I just got as many as I could. But then like there were these TV commercials for this thing called GI Joe that I had never heard of before. And, um, uh, and I know there was a commercial before that, but the first one I remember seeing had breaker in it. It was breaker with the Ram motorcycle. Right. And uh, I remember going, I believe it was uh, to Sears and, the G.I. Joe action figures were not on pegs. They were in a rack. And uh, trying to decide which one to get, because I could only get one, uh, I seem to recall kind of being influenced towards Breaker because I wanted to get the main guy, right? I, I right. can get all the other guys later. I just wanted the main guy first. And obviously, Breaker had to be the main guy. He was in the commercial. Um, right. Also, I think, I think my dad may have associated the brown beard with like 70s um flocked hair adventure team gi joe sure. so yeah. i think i might have been kind Naturally. of influenced in that way as well so it's like so Bray, this has got to be the main guy I mean, he doesn't come with any guns he comes with a radio thing but he's got to be the main guy so yeah i picked him up and um like G.I. Joe, they, they weren't the first O-ring figures. They weren't the first figures with knees and elbows. And yet somehow this was like a revelation. It was like, I've got, you know, uh, all of these Star Wars action figures. And then here's this guy who can, he moves better. Um, he, okay, his accessories may not be quite as cool, but he, you know, he has a removable helmet and they were nicely detailed. And he's got all these other guys uh, that go with him and are like, this is, this is really cool. He didn't have a movie, but you know, he had this uh, card on the back that kind of gave, uh, gave his backstory. So yeah, um, I, uh, I, I was very quickly obsessed uh, with GI Joe after picking up my first one. And um, I didn't, you know, I didn't give up on uh, star Wars. I still picked up star Wars. I think there was still like return of the Jedi came out shortly after. So, you know, there was a new wave of figures and I picked up some of those, but man, just, 
knees, elbows. That right. it was just um, an incredible thing to me. And then um, when I started reading the comic book, it all just really started to come together. Um, and that's where, like, okay, I realized eventually that Breaker wasn't the main guy, um, <laughs> but I still I still have a soft spot for Breaker. And when I started collecting as an adult, Breaker was the first figure that I got. Um, I wanted to go like right back to the beginning and get that same guy in the, in the straight arm 1982 form that I got back in 1982. Um, but um, yeah, but, but shortly after then, you know, I pick up Stalker and Stalker's got camouflage and he's got uh, he's got an actual gun that he comes with. And right. um, he's got a really interesting, uh, colorful background on his file card. And then uh, I start reading the comic books and he gets to lead missions. And I'm like, okay, that's really cool. And then the comic book goes on and, you know, you get some of his backstory connected to uh, Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes and Vietnam. And it's like, oh, wow, this is really cool. And um, uh, so, yeah, that I, I'd say maybe uh, uh, Stalker was influenced me more over the long term. But Breaker kicked the whole thing off. And um and, you know, I've, I have this whole thing going, this whole YouTube thing going, this whole um, uh, community that I get to be a part of, and I kind of have to give credit to Breaker for that. So, uh, so thanks, Breaker. And yeah, that's, that's my, uh, my number one, probably most influential uh, Joe and the one that absolutely kicked it off. Did you get the classified breaker right away? Then I did. I, in fact, he's over on my shelf. I can't reach it right now, but he's over on my shelf. And like, isn't it crazy that we live in a world where we can have a classified representation of Breaker? Yeah. Um, who is like not an A-list character, but an important character to me. Sure. And, yeah. yeah. And it would have been a very pleasant surprise. And he comes with a cycle. Yeah. Um. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. I got. Um, in fact, um, I. Um, my friend uh, Byron sent me the uh, Breaker and the Ram motorcycle, so I'm ex I'm extremely Amazing. happy to to have it. I and, love that um, figure. I just yeah. I, I just think Classified did a really great job. It's not perfect, but it's really really good. So he's yeah, better they, than the 25th yeah. version of Breaker. That thing is just atrocious. The bubble gum's cool, but the head, the bulbous head. Um, so, yeah, I guess it's an internal eternal debate uh, about whether Breaker should have a beard or not. My first memory of him is with the beard, um, but uh, but yeah, like I mean, I, I mean, I guess he could have bubble gum and the beard, but you know, it's going to get stuck in there. So. It does, yeah. <laughs> wow, that's a good story. Does anyone Can... notice anything strange about this picture, though? This picture of Breaker? Of Breaker. Hmm. Are those the wrong legs or what's going on here? I think that the photographer, in, a, in an attempt to emulate his card art, has actually removed the T-hook. Oh, and okay. oh. done some oh. subtle sleight of hand. Right. Because I think what you're talking about. Yeah. The, the That's why the legs, yeah, the legs yeah, look different. Kind of, That's why. He's, I thought you were calling me himself. Stretching Steve, I thought you were calling Ken for not having a beard. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, this is this is the mark of a, a man who just doesn't ha take the time to shave anymore. Uh, yeah. You actually do some manicuring there, Zez. Um, Brian, you oh, look the same. Yeah. Look at look how manicured I am. Yeah, look at us all looking looking our best. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know <laughs> if I could grow a beard. So precisely. So in, in, in all of our cases, I think it's maybe a case of like uh, just uh, disregard. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> Couldn't be asked. Um, anyway. Yeah. The one no, with the neatest is beard is Breaker. Yeah, no doubt. Can't beat plastic. So, so what is on his thigh? What is that? Do we know? It's a silver pouch. Why would it be silver? To differentiate him from whoever else uses that part, honestly, yeah, at that point it was literally just Breaker gets a silver that, dab. Everybody wears the same pants. It's like, <laughs> otherwise, well, you know, Breaker puts on clutches trousers. One of my favorite <laughs> little lines from uh, uh, one of the early comic books is um, Breaker, grab the computer porta pack. 
like a giant, I suppose, memory unit. Right, right, right. That he's pulling out of this sort of massive wall computer yeah, yeah. at a secret Cobra installation before mm. Cobra Commander hits the self-destruct switch. Anyway, so that could be a giant porter pack of memory. Right. Bam. Sure. Uh, uh, 130 KB. <laughs> so, Brian, I For suppose, 1982. I suppose mm. that with him not coming with a weapon, you wouldn't have really... Uh, had any any notion that a swivel arm would be an improvement, uh, being that he didn't didn't have a gun to have to worry about swiveling the arm to hold. But then when um, I guess when Stalker, you got V V one Stalker or V one point what is it one point B or one something? Point, like yeah, one point five. 1. 5. 1. 5. I think I had both, and my preference was for the swivel arm when they when they switched over to swivel arm. But for breaker, I do not think I got the uh, the swivel arm breaker as much as I recall. Um, I my recollection is that I put him on the Ram motorcycle, with, and he didn't need swivel arms for that. His his hands just kind of go in those slots, and yeah. uh, and that has a big gun on it. So that that was satisfactory to me he's on the ram and he has a bigger gun than everybody so um yeah so that that worked for me but but yeah once those 1.5s and then like the in the 1983 series came out and they had the swivel arm battle grip i was all about that that was that i thought that was a great improvement Mm. agreed all right Uh, all right we'll get rid of steve have you got have you got an image to share or do you want to talk on I, I'm, I'm going to roll live because guess what? The very first action figure that I bought for myself with my weekly allowance, I have here with me. The same oh, look plastic. Nice. Uh, the year was... Ni- I, I'd already had Joe's gifted to me before that. Uh, in, I actually put together a timeline to try and figure out what I got when. So in late 1989, I was already in possession of iceberg lifeline and monkey wrench but the very next year with a whole i think it was seven rands 50 and to put that in perspective back then it was four rand to the dollar so this was just under two dollars and south africa the sales taxes worked into the price you don't get a shock when you get to the till so right seven rands 50 probably two two and a half dollars or one and a half dollars uh, or just a bit more than that, I bought myself Hydro Viper. Nice. Wow. Very what cool. is it about Hydro Viper that drew me in? <laughs> probably, probably yeah. the unique sculpting. He was so different. But there was something very horrifying and very like primal about his card art. You know, the awkward purple man rattling around loosely in the bubble could never compete with that card art. But somehow... The card heart imbued the character with, with dimensions that the plastic could never achieve. Mm. Your imagination filled in the blanks, just like the gorgeous painted artwork for an Atari game that the graphics could right. never possibly exactly reproduce. Exactly right. Exactly so, right. Yeah. So Hydra Viper not only was like a cool diver character, but because of his his stylings and his design, was elevated into a whole new dimension of play, like. Just like you spoke about Motu being an influence, says uh, this guy could he could be a mutant, he could be a yeah. space alien, he could be super powered, he could run around slashing fools with this razor claw. I mean, if you look at the card art closely enough, it's definitely like they've not only given him webbed fingers, but they've extended his fingers into these like right. insane talons. Yeah. So. Um, I mean, I, I promptly lost most of his original accessories other than his dive gear. Okay, when I say most, I lost the hoses, I lost the spear gun, and I lost the knife. But I did keep his manta ray. Nice. And this, nice. in a very, like, aliens sense, this became his, like, face hugger weapon. Yeah, yeah. That oh, would yeah. absolutely just annihilate Joes in the most horrifying ways, uh, attaching to their faces and, I don't know, doing oh, something. The imaginations we had as kids. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that, I think, enamored me with G.I. Joe long before I, I really enjoyed the military aspects of it. So I suppose I was primed and I was probably the right age for Cobra Law and the G.I. Joe movie to really hit. Mm. So this is something that like I like to remind you know, guys who were at the, you know, there at the, the, the ground floor for G.I. Joe. 
like yourself, yeah. Brian, and and people on forums all the time who kind of deride GI Joe the movie. That imagine if you were like, <laughs> you know, watching this horrifying demise of Cobra Commander, for instance, you know, like a wobbly tooth, wobbly milk toothed four year old, um, yeah. as opposed to a thirteen year old who probably more interested in, in girls at that stage anyways i'm gonna to touch on that one it's my turn about, oh, about oh, you, commander okay good good oh no no but, when, uh, when you're done yeah. i'm gonna expand exactly on what you just said when but carry yeah, on yeah i later on my brother who was nine years my senior so probably the sweet spot for the early gi joe um lines he points it to shockwave as being like the man that's why I kind of imprinted upon that character because anything your older brother says or does is kind of put on a pedestal by you. Uh, so that's why he became my protagonist for much of my youth and into into my teens and even my 20s. I mean, I, I was still messing with my toys. Um, so yeah, Shockwave had the, the biggest and longest impact as a protagonist of mine. But I think if we're talking about what initially attracted us to G.I. Joe, just the variety. The variety you could have the green army man or you could have the wicked cool space mutant slashing yeah. people and sicking his his flying devil ray you know, to take them out you know these things were just very fertile uh stomping grounds it's funny that you mentioned that because uh croc master for me was was that exact feeling where i saw the the card art it was it was like pretty wild uh, he came with says, the animal I've companion. Still got your croc master. He says, "Perfect, I'll, nice." I'll send him on to you. Did you get that horse, by the way? No, not yet. No. Bloody Oz post. It's yeah, taking their time recently. Good. I don't. I don't need it exactly just yet. I'm working on something, but uh, it, I do appreciate awesome. that. Awesome. The um, yeah, but croc master was ticking off a lot of boxes. It had the the card art initially was what grabbed me to it. Um, the the wackiness of the character itself. The fact that I had an animal animal companion in the in the uh, the alligator, um, which I was just calling it a crocodile, and um, yeah, just and, and I guess part of that, just the outfit, the zaniness, the the mask, everything of it just seemed just out there, not as out there as, as yours, but uh, it's definitely what attracted me to it. Very very similar circumstances, and plus you got to double as a wrestler because there weren't a lot of those that I could use against Sarge, if I ever was able to find one, which I never was able to. That's a sore topic for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> However, Zays, if you want to talk um, my history, further history, I've got a little something I can share. Sure. Um, yeah, it's just drop okay. down and pump it up. Uh, yeah, that's me uh, in 1990, the kid in the middle with a sweet uh, kayak stalker, Tundra stalker. Nice. Oh. Yeah. So version two, I love after, it. there you go shortly really after cool. hydra viper rock my world it was back to the strict military stuff but this was for the kind of the secret santa um i don't know last day of preschool so this ah, was definitely cool. bought for me by my old man uh i, I imagine he bought me that because like j how could any action figure compete with a joe who's priced the same but mm. with a vehicle come yes. on that was a deluxe set. That is, I mean, that is sweet. By today's standards, that would be priced a lot higher because I think oh, toy companies, sure. they've become a bit more savvy to not giving away plastic for free. Mm. Um, and then later that same year, underneath the Christmas or underneath the Christmas tree was V3 Snake Eyes. So to get Snake Eyes and Stalker in such quick succession, yeah, that definitely entrenched G.I. Joe as my favorite toy line of all Sadly, it was not meant to last for very long because both of those figures met grisly ends. Uh, Stalker <laughs> got chewed up by the lawnmower, a bit of careless right. play in the garden. Mm. Uh, and Snake Eyes grew uh, additional legs and walked out of my house. I think uh, <laughs> perhaps an unscrupulous friend was like, mm, this is the coolest figure. I'm going to make him mine. At least that's my theory. Well, that awesome. forms part of the memories, doesn't it, though? You know yeah. it, baby. <laughs> Anyways, that's me. I mean, I could wax nostalgic all day long, but I do have a podcast for that. So I've indulged you long enough. Indulged me. Oh, I'm always happy to hear more. Always happy to hear more. 
All right, Ken. I'm trying to figure yeah. out what order. You oh, you just you you just flash something up, and I'll and I'll and I'll talk through it as best I can. Uh, I uh, I I'll try to get it get through it quickly because I got about 30 minutes of actual recording time, and I know you still want to cover the other topics, so I'll try to get through this in a in a few minutes if I can. So, much like your story um, there, Zazel, about how you wanted Duke, but you settled for Chuckles. I put this up because it's Flint, and I couldn't find a picture of Falcon on my phone when I was at lunch earlier trying to send you something, but I bought Falcon to be my Flint, much in the right. same way, because he had kind of, well, Flint in the cartoon had more of a green pattern like Falcon had, right? So when I finally got Flint from Toy Traders in 2000, and uh, I want to say 2006 or so, I was really, really happy. For the longest time, Falcon was my Flint. And on the, on the topic of Falcon... Um, and just because Steve was talking about the uh, the G.I. Joe movie there, um, I, I know that the, I, I was born in 82, right? So I would not have been able to get the early years of guys. So I was really ramping up around the movie and Tiger Force and all that. And I was not enamored with the G.I. Joe movie. And I can't seem to talk about G.I. Joe without talking about Transformers as their companion line. But if in 86, as a four-year-old, you got the Transformers, the death of Optimus, the amazing rock music, and Right. To top it all off, okay, you got the Unicron as the world eater, but you've also got Megatron in arguably for a, for a four-year-old kid getting cooler and becoming Galvatron. So right. you're just, pun intended, galvanized for the G.I. Joe movie. What's Cobra Commander going to become? Oh, they just make a mistake and they write him off. So that for me is what made, I would have been enamored with the G.I. Joe movie, but I got spoiled the year before. So when I got to the G.I. Joe movie, I kind of was like, what am I watching? Right, you know, they didn't make the guys cooler; they made them worse. Right, and then we got we got Galobulus and Cobra Law instead of Unicron, and I'm like, okay, I got to justify to myself why I like. No, I just don't like this movie. <laughs> right, so that's sure. my story about how that shook out. Um, so, just to clarify, you got Falcon to be your Flint. Yes, but I couldn't right, find a picture you. of Falcon on my phone, so I sent you a picture of Flint. Well, I gotcha, was at gotcha. lunch earlier, so yeah, that's fine. I just want to make sure. I was con I was making it confusing for myself. It wasn't anything you were saying, mate. Oh, okay, fair enough. Myself. Fair enough. Yeah, so so then you eventually were able to pick up your own Flint. Um, Flint yeah, eventually. Yeah, yeah. You, can, yeah. you can jump cool. to the next image now. All right. Yeah. So okay, this is largely here. Um, I was just going to go with the regular color. Um, Renegades, but I know that Steve's got a series about the Renegades on there, and I thought, what would be cooler than showing these guys? And I know you both, Brian and you, Zazel, both watch his channel. What would be cooler than Marauders painted, you know, Renegades, cool. right? Yeah. Uh, Mercer for me, like you had Croc Master for you as your wrestler guy, and I had Mercer for me. My original Mercer, you know, I did that thing where the O-ring broke off and I unscrewed it and I threw a, a rubber band, elastic band on the inside like a lot of kids did. So he was my wrestler, right? And I did grow up, as much as I wasn't a fan of the G.I. Joe movie, and it's grown on me a little bit, I was always a fan of these three, right? The fact that Sarge finally got his own crew on camera just made it, uh, just was just a sweet spot for me. So, and my, my friend Peter from Sparkplug Customs did this, uh, Oh, they look great. So yeah. It was said in the G.I. Joe the movie commentary that Taurus was uh, supposed to be based off of the Iron Sheik. Uh, oh. Jimmy Snooker, Superfly, uh, as Red Dog. And in the middle, uh, it, is, it is said to be um, He-Man, Dolph Lundgren. Oh, okay. I did not know this. Well, well that's why we do podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, I can see cool. that's why I used that's why I used um, Taurus as the Iron Bull, uh, the the chic type character in uh, the Slaughterhouse. Here, that's right. I remember that. I remember that. Okay, cool. All right, and you can just jump yeah. to the next image. I think I got you two got more. It, buddy. Yeah. Um, okay. So oh, this yeah. is this is mostly here because I, I wanted to get a picture of Sarge. And I, I like you. I see my other obsession, albeit. Um, more from a guilty pleasure as opposed to collecting. I, I collect it, but more from a guilty pleasure standpoint is wrestling, right? And I did not get a Sergeant Slaughter as a kid, just like just like you did. But this was like when I... Um, this story is more of an ad adult story because I wanted these figures, especially Sarge, as a kid. And in 2019, some of you guys have seen me on my channel do my tours of toy traders and the store and their displays and all oh, that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and... Um, 
for a long time, that Sergeant Slaughter was hanging on the pegs. And a lot of you know people in the community were like, man, we hardly ever see him come around. He's a mail away. He's hard to get, but he's a little overpriced. And some people felt that he was like way too overpriced. And I was like, it's just hanging there. You know, I see prices going up. So I grab it. Right. So Christmas of 2019, I become the grand idiot of Vancouver who overpaid for <laughs> the uh, the LJN style Sergeant Slaughter. Now, of course, this is not a childhood story, but Sarge shaped my life. And this is this is a sure, feel good nah, story. This is a feel good story by the end where now as prices continue to soar, he goes way up. And instead of, you know, Ken, the idiot who overpaid for the Sarge, right, it becomes right. we better get that because it's oh, it's already gone. Who was yeah. the jackass who got it? Oh, it was Ken. So <laughs> depending who you talk to, I'm either the idiot or the jackass. So I either sure. overpaid or I stole it. But either way, I don't win. But I have it, so I win in my own head. If well, that can makes I ask sense. how much you originally paid for it, Ken? Okay, so with Australian dollars, Canadian dollars being one-to-one -one par after tax, I paid six fifty. Right. Okay. So translating right. translating that back to American dollars, that's just north of five, somewhere between five and five twenty five American. So in 2019 dollars, people felt it was too much. Now they're asking way more. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, that was just one of those like, screw it. I'm just going to do it. Right. So that's my story yeah. on that figure. It's in and very, I I... very decent condition, too, Ken. I've seen pictures of one where the, the brim of the campaign cover is broken off. The, yeah. uh, you know smudges and scuffs are common on, on the LJNs anyway, but uh, I have i don't see a lot of very good examples, and this one's a very good example. Well, the back is a little bit scuffed up, but it's it's not that bad, so yeah. Anyway, That's and nice. I think I got one more photo after this. Battle damage. Um, so is that ink then near the, near the whistle? I, oh, I don't know. Oh, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's the, uh, the color fades after a while, I think. Um, they just have oh, some right. color, co color damage, because he was made of a different material. He was more... He was he was more plasticky. I don't know if he was. I guess he was more ABS, whereas the other uh, the others were more uh, were more rubberized. Gotcha. So right. if they had ABS back then, I assume it was. But yeah. Oh, it's delightful anyway. to see paint wear on the gloves and the boot mm. tips because that means some child had the ecstatic yeah. joy of doing this yes. right. with his sword, which is just yes. yes. I mean, we treat them like museum pieces agree. now, but it's so lovely to know that they were played with. And, it's and you like your matches. figures played with, Steve. You mentioned yeah. that before. You like your figures yeah. played with. So, yeah. <laughs> But I don't know if I'd feel comfortable taking Hulk and Sarge uh, now knowing no. <laughs> that 650 uh, Canadian yeah. and doing that. No. I'm just grateful that this figure has known what that feels like. Yeah. You know what? Now that you point that out, right. I'm glad to. So anyway, it's, it's a beauty. moving on, yeah. moving on. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this this ties mm -hmm. in. Um, you may as show it off now. <laughs> so this is this. Yeah, payload parts off on payload. The slide. But yeah. you may as well go to the next one because yep. this this ties into that. Okay. So um, this was when I happened to set both of these up. But this picture for me right now is about the mobile command center on my seventh birthday when I when I asked what I wanted. We went to Toy City which is now a defunct store. And on one end of the aisle, they had the mobile command center. On the other end, they had the Defiant. And I walked up, and I don't know why, but I kissed the box of the mobile command center. My mom was like, okay, I guess that's what I'm getting for you, right? So I get the mobile command center. And actually, my original mobile command center is gone. But if you can see, there's the corner of the mobile command center here, which I got from 2014 at Toy Traders. And... Um, and again, this ties back a little bit to Sarge because a lot of the art does not have the armadillo coming out. It has the triple T triple coming T, out. So I always right. wished I had that. But I always wondered, like as much as I love the mobile command center, as much as I stand by that decision of seven-year-old Ken, mm. I always wonder what would have happened if I had gotten the Defiant. And that's why I, I have those that hard top and payload in the, in the previous picture. I still don't have a Defiant to this day. Um, not that I have room between these two, the flag, the terror dome, a couple of big transformers. I'm sitting there. Where were the, where were the, I can't even display any of these anyway. Look at how the mobile command center has to stay tucked up like this, right? So I don't know where I would even put a defiant if I got one, but just saying that that's how that story ties together from my youth. So, so you've picked up yeah. these figures after the fact in, in hopes uh, that you'll pick up defiant maybe one day or are these uh, uh, just your placeholders? I think I was passive aggressively um, <laughs> just, uh, just 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 taunting myself in a way to wonder right. if I could pull the trigger. So yeah. Anyway, well, you've, that's me. You've on. taken you've taken big bites out of the, the 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 cost of getting complete defiant 
Yeah, yes, because both both oh, yes. those are compl- both those are complete. So that would knock a few hundred dollars at least off of it. So yeah, a few hundred. <laughs> yeah. A few from, hundred uh... for that microphone, my friend. <laughs> I was gonna say that too. Yeah. True. Yeah, these are some great anyway. vehicles, though. I don't think the I don't think the Triple T actually fits all that well. Mm. Um, Whereas the the, the armadillo, you can actually close the yeah. MCC up over it. Perfect. Yeah, that's correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I got about 18 minutes here, Zazel. So maybe when we do the, uh, the the next topic, maybe I'll I'll jump in second instead of fourth. That's cool with everybody. Well, that's just fine, in yeah. case I just in case I drop if I rudely drop off, it's just because I had to. You Ken, know, you can go to... first, my friend. Go for it. Uh, okay, just uh, maybe remind us of the topic. <laughs> so the topic is uh, which real life personality should have been added or should be added to the line. Either way, okay, or both. Okay, whatever you got. All right. All right, so I think the original plan before Big Boa was that Rocky should have been in the line. I think I heard or I read that somewhere. Um, so in, in my mind's eye, some way, somehow, even if he didn't do it at the height of the Rocky films, maybe it's after the highly panned Rocky Five. somehow you do get Rocky in the line, knowing that there's a little bit of extra to go there, right? So you get him in the line, which means you can get Apollo Creed somehow in the line, right? right. In my mind's eye, that conversation with the heroes in heels the girls line carries on and joe's just never dies right so flash forward to modern times and you've got rocky you've got apollo now you've got the son adonis creed real life right. hero in the line on the cobra side Ooh, connor right. mcgregor right and connor mcgregor and adonis creed oppose one another in the line in modern times how about that does that work well, I, I thought you were going to say opening the door to a whole bunch of Rocky characters, though. <laughs> Honestly, like Clyde, give me a Mister T, if you please. And yes. Dolph Lundgren again has a has yeah. an in. Absolutely, Beautiful. absolutely. Yeah. So there you go. Right. Anyway, That's that was my story for happen. for that. So okay. I thought, I thought you were going to say uh, Adonis as a, in Cobra before you brought in um, Conor McGregor. So, no, I, I, I was thinking about about it, and then I was like, somebody, somebody's got to go against them, and it's got to be yeah, someone yeah, in real yeah. life who is controversial enough that people would want his figure, and that's when I went you with almost, Con. You could almost put CM Punk in there. He already has the Cobra tattoo. Actually, yeah. Actually, you got me thinking that, because my CM Punk figure from wrestling is right here. And I, Does he's he got have a the Cobra on, tattoo but, on the figure? Um, you talk, I'll figure it out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, mine mine was very simple. Um, I thought that someone that should have been added to the line, particularly when Sarge was in the height of his popularity as a G.I. Joe, he was wrestling in that version one outfit. He had the USA. He had the, the, the stripes down the side of his uh, wrestling attire. Well, there you go. Uh, and awesome. It's amazing how they can get so much detail onto an action figure these days. Yeah. Anyway, carry on. So, Sorry, yeah, I wasn't so trying to cut you off. The only thing that they didn't have was someone for Sarge to go up against. And I don't mean necessarily just for uh, the action figures, but they didn't have anyone that he could wrestle against to, um, I guess, capitalize on the idea of it. So they've got, they've got Sarge... Uh, wrestling in uh, in the AWA as GI Joe Sergeant Slaughter, uh, head to toe GI Joe, he'd say. And I think there was a there was some time where he was trying to get a, a wrestler to come in with him, uh, trying to talk to Hasbro about it. And I think I got I got to look it up, but I think it was maybe Vader, but I could be wrong on that. I, I don't it doesn't sit. I don't know, not one hundred percent sure. But I think the person they could have used was Jake the Snake, and he's already got a snake motif. Uh, per- perfect fit for him to be part of Cobra. Obviously, down the line, uh, you had the Iron Grenadiers with uh, Roddy Piper. But having someone, even if you know nothing more about wrestling, you only know the name Jake the Snake. I mean, if you knew nothing about wrestling and all you knew was the name Sergeant Slaughter, that's already a good sell. So you got Sergeant Slaughter going against Jake the Snake, and then you have their action figures uh, at the same time on the on the, on the store shelves. And then you pit those real life wrestling personalities selling out stadiums as GI Joe versus Cobra, and you know they can have long standing feuds that you know go on for however long uh, that popularity lasts. 
Anyway, it was just a quick one from me. It's just uh, what I thought should should have possibly been an idea, even if it wasn't Jake the Snake, somebody else that he could um, wrestle with specifically for uh, for GI Joe. Now, Brian, you had you introduced me to something. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah I, I when thinking about this, I. Um... Well, I, I knew you guys would probably go with the wrestling th- uh, theme, and and I don't know from wrestling. So I was sure. trying to think of, like, I don't know, a superhero. And then I started to think about, okay, what, what other real-life personalities have already been in G.I. Joe? And it made me think of The Fridge. And I thought, okay, well, who in that universe would, uh, would be a, a, a good Joe? At least, you know, somebody you could count on to... Uh, uh, to really take the fight to the enemy. And it just hit me, of course, it's Lawrence Taylor from the New York Giants, who uh, played for the New York Giants during the 1980s. And if you imagine uh, the fridge, Lawrence Taylor is kind of like the fridge, except for different in every way. The fridge was <laughs> a, a a lovable giant, a, a gentle giant, with you will, very affable happy kind of happy-go-lucky guy. Lawrence Taylor is pretty much the opposite of that. Um, he enjoyed, you know, snapping people's limbs and uh, and essentially destroying people's lives and careers. Uh, mm. that's, that's pretty much uh, what he did for a living. So I thought, you know, you know, uh, on Gung Ho's file card, it kind of paints him as, you know, as a, a brawler. Yeah, he's got kind of a, a violent history before he joined the Marines. He's uh, he's a really rough and tumble guy. Well, the, Lawrence Taylor's basically the same way. He he's he's along those lines of a gung ho, not a guy that you want to meet in in a dark alley or anywhere really. Um, but um, but it, when it's time to go to war, when it's time to go to battle, Lawrence Taylor, you want him on your team. Um, he's uh, more or less indifferent to injuries. He doesn't care. Mm-hmm. Um, and on yeah. that note, sorry to cut you off there. On that note, you say the wrestling theme. He did get in the ring, right? Um, in in WrestleMania 11, he was in the main event against Bam Bam Bigelow. So technically, while not a wrestler, he had that one-off appearance. So it actually works compared right. to everything else we've been talking about. It's like that it sounds, completely that worked. About right, yeah. So um, yeah, now, Lawrence Taylor uh, rather famously had a, a substance abuse habit so you know after the mission you might not see him for a few days um and and if he stayed on the team to the point where uh gi joe faced off against Headman, he might switch sides but sure as long as you can keep him on the team um you know he he could line up next to sergeant slaughter and take out as many cobra bats as as they come um so yeah, oh, yeah. um just a just a really mean dude uh and um would he be a good teammate? Well, hey, he was on a team. Um, True. So, kind of. Um, I, I don't think he liked people telling him what to do. It might have made it a little di- might have made military life a little difficult for him. But, um, yeah, I, I could see him knocking a few heads together. Yeah, so that that's my he'd, choice. He uh, definitely fit in with the Renegades. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah. So, that, I had no I'm, idea who this was. Um, uh, we, we have a, we have a very international panel today being, we've got Canada, South Africa, America, and me being Australian. Uh, I had no idea who this was. Uh, in fact, I only really knew the fridge because of GI Joe, but but you sent me a video link to, uh, some of his career highlights and the whole time I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't want to face this guy. I would want him on my team. Yeah. He's, he's, he's Uh, very large and fast. And athletic and just a beast. Even while severely under the influence, he was still able to perform to the best of his ability. And uh, uh, Ken, for for if, if, he would probably be out of rival um, Andre the Giant as far as a, a drinking session would be concerned, and still be able. Well, to maybe, perform. maybe. Uh, it, but I it mean, was an eye opener, yeah, I mean, Brian, an eye opener. You know, like I wasn't a big NFL fan so growing I up. I knew about it. it. But he did pin Bam Bam Bigelow at WrestleMania 11, right? He has that image of forever jumping go. off. For and they close the segment with him celebrating in the ring at WrestleMania 11. So like it's that's my actual memory of Lawrence Taylor more so than what he did on the football field. So 
Yeah, he, he, he's so on the football he's field. He's famous for like snapping uh, Joe Theismann's leg in half. Basically, he's, mm. he's, wow. he's a pretty rough guy. Wow, yeah. I didn't know it was that bad. I heard yeah. about it, but not. I'll not, send not you the link that I got, Ken. See if, and <laughs> see if you can stand. Yeah. It. There's a there's a rather yes there's a rather gruesome uh, clip of that I can't watch it I've seen it I can't watch it again. It Jeez, said you uh, make me think of uh, Mike Tyson and then jump. maybe Tyson should be in GI Joe or Cobra. I mean, if you're talking about uh, a guy who's got a reputation for brutality, yeah, <laughs> true, pretty much. I, well, I mean, in the ring at least, uh, out of the ring, he loves his carrier pigeons, doesn't he? He can come with a and tiger accessory. Also part of WWE. Oh, genius! You can you can confirm that Ken that Mike Tyson had a in ring press on point. Oh, sorry. Um, ah, sort of. Um, he did show up at WrestleMania 14 main event more as an outside enforcer. He got to count the final three count and knock out Shawn Michaels. So that was the kind of extent of his yeah, in-ring presence. And that's sort of what, what sort of kicked off the, what largely kicked off that very highly co commercial attitude era. Um, yes, there is absolutely that, that point of Mike Tyson. Well, Brian, uh, that is a top pick for sure. And even if he didn't make it into the G.I. Joe, he'd definitely make a great renegade. Um, yeah. And yeah. heaven forbid, uh, a Cobra. So, Yeah, he, he could easily be a bad guy. But, well, you know, so could Gung Ho. Gung Ho is kind of kind of has that attitude uh, as well. You just, you're just glad he's on your side. True. All right, Steve, who have you got for us, matey? Well, I split this into eras. I think in the 80s, uh, you would have a hot seller on your hands if you'd managed to recruit Arnold Schwarzenegger into G.I. Joe Cobra. True. Uh, yeah. bit, of a, bit of a tricky rights issue because the actor is a thing. It, it, the actor is one thing, but his roles are owned by various different production companies and studios. Uh, but if you had a base figure slap a leather jacket and some glasses on him, and he's the Terminator. Put some well, Terminator paint. showed up as well, didn't he, Ken? Showed up at one of the WrestleManias? Or was that... Um... No, I, I think that was WCW, and I think that ah. may have been... Uh, that may have been one of the forgettable instances that they <laughs> that you watch it and you purge it out of your mind. So, like, I'm trying to remember if that's where I saw it or not. Same, and RoboCop made a, an appearance. RoboCop definitely did, but again, I think that might have been WCW. So... I'm sure the Terminator, the Terminator did. I'll look it up. But please continue, Steve. Yeah, yeah look, this thing I, is great. I, that we're to be I don't have a sporting bone in my body, so my first thought never went to an athlete. But yeah, as far as an iconic sure. and, and multi-rolled, um, <laughs> massive dude, uh, I think Arnold in GI Joe really works too easily. Con Conan. There you go. So many. True. All of his roles make for great fodder and a great Predator. avenue. <laughs> right. I mean, those are the Joes as far as I'm concerned. Like yep. Jesse Ventura with that slouch hat and the minigun. Yeah. It's just like these <laughs> archetypes. Mac with his yeah. uh, machine gun. Yeah, man. All of them. So good. All Billy. Right. Blaine, so the Terminator so was a playable character. Well, the, the Terminator was a playable wrestler in the... WWE 2K16. So I believe there may have been some promotional stuff around that time for live wrestling, but still. Work it out for, and give us the really toys. <laughs> done. You know, and you know what? You could also have a spin off line with articulation, like with the wrestling line that I, I have, the, have the GI Joe articulation, but have him have his own line, um, you know, for, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger in the leather jacket, that's just him, but Arnold Schwarzenegger leather jacket. Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, with nothing on, just you know, for those instances where you need him I mean, to just got, portal in. We uh, got Jean Claude Van Damme, but take it one step of. further, man. You, you're yeah. aiming, you're aiming yeah. too low. Uh, Arnie would be the man. But if you're talking uh, a real world individual of the now. Here we are. The, 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 the scariest people to me are the techno futurists, and you don't get right. more scary than, than Elon Musk. Right. Uh, like, if you want a like <laughs> next level evil scientist to top Dr. Venom, right. to top Dr. Mindbender, this man has his finger in absolutely every pie. Um, and I reckon he'd be down for it too. I reckon he'd love that. <laughs> frightening. 
Um, <laughs> and and I have to uh, just say that it would mark the first time an official South African GI Joe entered the line. So, oh, there you go. Um, I, I will gladly Last play baddie yeah. or goody. I mean, yeah. as a plot device, a guy like this is so essential. How often were they running after top science personnel in the cartoon? And how essential were scientists to, I don't know, 70, 80, 90% of Larry's scripts? Uh, the, the mind, the Dr. Mindbender or Dr. Venom's brainwave scanner uh, seems to be the most oft used plot device of all. So I don't know. Right. Tesla. So anyway, maybe. Yeah. So, gentlemen, I, I do have to bounce, but. Um... Oh, whoops. <laughs> Hang on. So <laughs> Sorry, <immediate. mate. laughs> I was about to plus myself back in and I'm like, oh, you're really eager there. <laughs> yeah. But um, so Brian, I'll be in touch about uh, Cobra Convergence and um, Steve, always love your stuff. And Zay, sorry, I didn't get to listen to who you would have chosen. Um, no, I'd, but, yeah, uh, I yeah, but um, <laughs> gentlemen, this was a lot of fun and uh, mm. just so much, so much fun connecting with the three of you guys and love to do it again. Anytime, any yeah. topic, whatever you guys want. Right. I'll even talk girls. I'll even talk girls toys just to talk, you know, just talk toys with you gentlemen, even stuff I didn't collect, I should say. All right. Have a good one, guys. And uh, take care of the rest of the way. See you. At ease. At ease, disease. <laughs> You're dismissed. All right. Well, we actually touched on all the topics that uh, we had written down anyway. So we, we managed <laughs> to get party. through them. That's right. Can not miss the after party? So, well, let's just uh, talk a little bit about Cobra Convergence and uh, Brian, because uh, I know Ken's eager to get on it. I'd like to give it a crack. What's the plan? So, um, well, we're in the very early stages of planning. And right now I'm just trying to figure out, like, who wants to be in so I can kind of get a roster together. Um, and uh, just a little background, in case anybody isn't familiar with Cobra Convergence. Um, it started out really as just me and FormBX257 and Timmer uh, because I, I liked those guys. Uh, they were like my main guys that I would watch all the time. And I noticed that like I've watched all their videos. They had never like collaborated with anybody. So I just dropped a little hint like in the comments or an email to each other. And like, hey, would you ever work with anybody? And they were both like, yeah, I guess so. And then, so... You know, we just started putting it together and we did this thing where we kind of all uh, uploaded our own thing, um, Cobra related thing on the same day. And then, you know, the next year we, we wanted to do it again and we wanted to do it bigger. And it's just kind of progressed like that through the years. And it's become just a, a fun, at least I hope it's fun. It's meant to be fun way for the community to just get together and do something together and just um, enjoy being a community, enjoy sharing something uh, that we enjoy, um, maybe raise the profile of uh, of the G.I. Joe and Cobra brand a little bit for a little while. And uh, yeah, just uh, just do something that is ours, something that's fun. It's not officially sponsored by anyone. It's just something we do for fun. And um, yeah, we had been doing it every July. Uh, the last one was in August because I had a lot going on and I just couldn't get ready for July, but it should be in July this year. Uh, I took last year off because I took last year off of everything really. Uh, but we are, we're back and we need to make it happen again this year. It, um, I missed it last year. Uh, I regret not having it last year. Uh, I, I miss everybody and I miss just the camaraderie and seeing all the cool things that everybody comes up with. I, I just, I really get a kick out of the creativity uh, that comes out of this community every year. And you just mm -hmm. give them an opportunity to create yeah. and they uh, make some amazing things. So uh, yeah. Oh, it should be in July. Uh, this time I'm going to try to make it on time and um, we will um, we'll, we'll try to get as many people in as we can. I try to focus on like people who are doing GI Joe stuff, but I, another thing I've done the last couple of years is kind of open it up to everybody. So like maybe you are not primarily doing GI Joe. Maybe you don't, you know, um, uh, don't have a regular show, but you want to do something for it anyway. Well, just, do it and send it to me and I'll, you know, I'll put a clip in a, a video 
uh, every week and just sh uh, showcase all of the crazy cool things that the entire community is doing uh, for that given mm -hmm. week. So uh, oh, I've, I've really tried to expand it as much as I can. Um, I've kind of become the de facto organizer, but I don't want to be like a, a gatekeeper. I want it to be something that's inclusive, something that um, that people want to be a part of, something that um, uh, that everybody feels like they can be a part of. So, uh, but we do have, you know, if if um, if we can get people who do have regular shows, they they produce content on a regular basis. We try to uh, feature those people, and uh, we try to do something throughout the entire month of July. We we. Uh, try to have fresh content every every day if we can, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, just make that entire month a big block of of uh, of Cobra stuff, of you know, you know our everything that we love about GI Joe's bad guy. So right, uh, we we usually start the planning phase in January. It is January, so it's time to do that. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to uh, try to get that kickstart a little bit, uh, try to contact some people, uh, see who who we have had in the past, who has the time and inclination to do it again, uh, see who the new content creators are, who's out there that's uh, mm. uh, that maybe I'm not aware of because I was AWOL for a year. And um, so, yeah, we're, we're going to put it together. Uh, I'll be trying to contact everybody very soon and see what we can get going. But yeah, July, we should be bombarding the internets with uh with cobra and lots of gi joe love that's excellent that's very exciting i know that there's a lot of people uh that that are now on youtube doing their own gi joe stuff that some may not even be aware of the cobra convergence if they're only just new to it and i'm sure there's a lot of people that will be willing to uh, support it and come back on if, if they have previously I hope so. We had started doing it just with YouTube people, but the last couple of years, we kind of expanded that and like whatever kind of content you produce, you have an Instagram, you have a podcast, you know, what do you have? We will, uh, we'll showcase it. And, you know, I, I, I like it to uh, I'd like to kind of be on our own team, right? I, I, uh, to promote the, the people that, uh, that we care about, that we enjoy watching and that are making an effort to put something out there, something creative and something that, um, that kind of shares their enjoyment of something. So, uh, yeah, yeah that's, that's what it's about for me. And I, and I hope that a, a lot of people are, um, uh, are interested. I, I am aware uh, now of a couple podcasts that I was not aware of before. So we'll see if we got get a couple more podcasts on. I'm now aware of some more YouTube channels that have uh, kicked off since I, you know, went uh, went missing. So hopefully we can get some of those guys on board. Um, I'm really excited. It's gonna it's gonna be a good one. I'm I really hope it's gonna be. I always hope every year is the best year. So I, right. hope, it's, I hope it's a good one. Well, I I quietly confident that you'll get a lot of uh enthusiastic people wanting to see it return and uh i think now that now that you are back are you want to add to that steve oh i i don't know if i do i i almost wanted to, to get a little tease of what uh, a potential theme could be but uh i'm pretty sure the commander will unveil his master plan mm -hmm. as and when he's good and ready so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna withdraw that question for now Carry on, Zez. Unless you do want to share. Whoa. Uh, unless Hot you takes do up in here. Unless you do. I, I, hey, I, I haven't worked. I have not that far along yet. So uh, I'm, I'm taking ideas. I am <laughs> eager to steal any ideas or borrow any ideas. Completely give well, we credit had, for We had idea. Cobra Purple. Let's, I mean, we had Cobra Blue. Let's have Cobra Purple. Go. Right. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. G.I. So Joe will are, never have dominion options. over that color, I tell you. It's Cobra all the way. Yeah. Lots of options yeah. for purple. Lots, lots, lots of Cobra options for purple. Oh, yeah. Interesting ones. Mm. And uh, like, like I've mentioned, the, the, it, if people have the same idea of a video, I would be more than happy to sit through two or three of the same topic just because everyone has a different perspective on things. You know, I've, I probably uh, have watched, you know, 20, 30 Sergeant Slaughter reviews 
uh, in the last couple of months uh, on a figure that I already own, just to get you know some other person's perspective on it and and their thoughts and feelings. Uh, and I, I think it. Oh, be that's the, the best way. part. You talk about it like it's like it's an outlier, but that is absolutely well, no, why we yeah. do what we do. I I love seeing other people's perspectives and what they add to the conversation on something that like a toy that I know every line, every contour, mm. everything about, you know, that is so well known to my hands, but to hear someone else express what they like or dislike about it. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah that's, best. That, 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 that's why uh, on some reviews, especially when I was reviewing something that I didn't like, I, I started trying to like bring in people who did like that particular toy because I want to know what their perspective is. Um, and uh, it, it was it, that's always enlightening to me um, because whatever you may think about any individual figure or vehicle, um, it is probably somebody's favorite toy. And that's fascinating to me. I want to everything except for the Cobra Rat. The Cobra Rat is nobody's favorite toy. <laughs> Other than that, um, it's probably so. Oh, I know a guy, toy. Brian. I know a guy. <laughs> so some some strange guy in some back alley is like got a stockpile of Cobra Rats. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, I'm I'm kidding. If if you like the Cobra, I'm just, I just I just. <laughs> no, it's horrible. What are you talking yeah. about? I don't even need to have a copy to know that it's a hollow piece of shit. But yeah. hey, it. It, it it had some interesting box art, maybe. I yeah. don't know. There's an angle. I, I legitimately thought that like habits. it was missing parts. I put I put the thing together. I opened a, a fresh box and put the thing together. I thought it was missing parts. I really <laughs> did. <laughs> right. Yep. I've seen I've never owned one. I've seen pictures of it and it, yeah, it doesn't interest me. Just look at the underside. You know, get some pictures of the underside and you'll, you'll right. see. Right. Yeah. It. Um I know what you're talking about. So the um, as far as uh, talking on other people's perspectives, I've I've watched your uh, Sergeant Slaughter reviews, uh, and then your your one that you did where you sort of did a, a amalgamation of all of them together in one review, uh, and your review, and, and then I saw Timmer's uh, short run on I think it was, he featured Sarge for a month. Between the mm -hmm. two of you, the very different perspectives on that, and then uh, I've done I've done a review on all the O ring sergeant slaughter figures that were available including international releases and my opinions are very different uh towards yours and, and timmer's mine mine are probably a little bit more positive in in parts where uh others <laughs> might might not be able to overlook it but that's the re that's the perspective that i need because um i mean i have to tread kind of carefully with somebody like sergeant slaughter because i'm not a, a wrestling aficionado so i'm kind of uh, talking outside of my personal experience all i can all i can draw upon is my own experience so having somebody who's more connected to the character like that is a, that's helpful to me because i i learn from that mm, well i mean i um i've started hoarding sergeant slaughters i call it my slaughter disorder uh i'm trying to get to the mythical number of 777 sergeant slaughter action figures um, i'm at 300 plus but um i've only just it's only just i mean the information's out there but i've only just in the last couple of years have been finding out other variations of of sergeant sort of that were available internationally and also different paint variations of the standard releases like uh triple t sarge has four camo pattern variations uh, right. you know you gotta some of them you really gotta look really close at to see uh but as only so i've i was almost at the, the 300 mark before i actually was able to pick up my very first mail away so I've, had, I've got a bunch of mail away sarges but this is the first one that i ever picked up that had the inverted colors on the chevron so um and one of the and it was one of those things where was, i didn't i didn't realize i wanted it until i had it in my hand you know and so i'm still finding things now that i didn't think were important to my collection um you know different paint variations super cop is part of the the slaughter core i call it he just the head alone uh makes him uh part of the part of the team but it's um, yeah, I mean, people have their own their own passions, their own collecting habits, 
And if I was, I saw a, a picture a little while ago of someone who had a bunch of Serpentor figures, like an army, a row of Serpentor figures. And uh, I see a lot of people comment going, why would you have so many? Why, what is the point of this? And I'm looking at that going, yeah, I understand it. I get it. I understand it. It's, <laughs> you know, I don't judge other people's collecting habits. Yeah, we, we, we all collect for our own reasons. And uh, we all, you know, draw these personal connections to different things for different reasons. And I, I kind of I think you kind of have to respect that. Um, and mm. I, at least I try to. Uh, I'm always uh, very frank about what I think about things. But like, that's, that's just like my opinion, man. Sure. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, and I... I, I genuinely get enjoyment out of seeing somebody else enjoy something. Right. And um, like, man, I don't get the alley Viper. I just don't get it. Right. But there are mm. people who love that. And I love that they love it. And I enjoy listening to people talk about things that they love. And that's true of, of toys, but that's also true of a lot of things. And right. uh, so, um, yeah, uh, it's, yeah, I, I enjoy like like I said, I, I don't know a whole lot about wrestling, and uh, so I can't add that perspective. But somebody else does, and somebody else like really loves it, and that comes through. I I I don't want to misquote you, but you mentioned recently that you're um, less impressed by the size of someone's collection as you are behind the passion behind it. Yeah, Is that, is that I. So, yeah, I've known uh, a lot of people now with lots of massive, huge collections, and it's cool. It's fun to have lots of toys, lots of old plastic. But uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm more uh, um, interested in like, you know, uh, what kind of what kind of person are you? Like, right. <laughs> how do you yeah. how do you treat other people? Um, that's always going to be more important to me than how much plastic you own. Uh, and so like, I've known people with huge collections who are just genuinely lovely people and uh, uh, great people that I would do anything for. I've known people with big collections who are, I just don't want to have anything to do with them. Uh, it, so yeah, I, I'm, I think I'm pa at, I'm past that phase where I am envious of big collections. Mm. Um and again, it's nothing against having big collections. I've got a fairly sizable collection myself now. Sure. But um, like at some point, is you know, is it, are you doing something you're passionate about or are you just like spending a lot of money on old things? That There's nothing especially <laughs> admirable sure. about spending a lot of money on old plastic. But, um, but there is, there is something kind of special about, um, following a passion and bringing joy to something and sharing joy about something. And uh, I think you can do that about most things in that sense. GI Joe is not really special. It's something that I enjoy and I like to, to share that enjoyment, but uh, whatever it is that somebody enjoys, if they can you know, make the world a slightly brighter place by spreading some of that enjoyment and uh, to other people, then I, it's just not not a not a damn thing wrong with that. Uh, whatever it is, yeah. I mean, you can you know you can like your cobra laws and your globuluses and uh, right. or globuli, alley vipers, the, alley vipers. <laughs> yeah, the alley vipers, right? Um, but uh, yeah, and I think I, I I probably was more harsh on things that I didn't like in the early days, but you know, perspective changes perspective. Uh, True. No, I I will concede. Robo Joe does deserve to be in the dumpster, but you know, <laughs> what you gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> if that was your guy, that was your guy. You played. Yeah. Him. Um, like I said, I do there, have there, this to there, say. There, yeah. There, there are people who. Yeah, th that's somebody's favorite toy. That that is somebody had that. Probably slept with it. Uh, uh, had it in the bathtub. Whatever you know. Um, but uh, I don't judge. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> I had Crocmaster in the bathtub. Yeah, uh, I feel bad for Hasbro him. Now. Had a hard time figuring out what a, the the difference between a crocodile and an alligator was. I yeah uh, yeah true. So the um, I, I bumped into a guy who was wearing a Snake Eyes t shirt, and and I I just said, "Hey, you're a you're a GI Joe fan," and he had no collection at all to speak of. 
but he picked up the shirt because he used to have some of them and he, and he, and he felt that uh that little hint, hit of nostalgia so he picked up the shirt and i thought and we had a great conversation about things that we used to have you know it doesn't always have to be about look what i have now yeah uh you know the, i had a lot of toys i don't have now that i still remember fondly but uh there, there are people who are really uh, diehard fans who who uh, commit a lot of their time to you know, this particular hobby, but without a collection. There are people who express their enjoyment in many different ways, and with uh, the uh, cosplay, uh, with you know just just watching the old cartoons or just having conversations mm -hmm. like that with other fans, and I, I think that's great. Um, I. Yeah, given my my background, you know, I I tend not to put a great emphasis on uh, sp spending lots of money. Uh, s spending lots of money on something is, to me, not a a measurement of how much you enjoy it or how much you're committed to it. I, we didn't yeah. have that much money when I was a kid, so mm -hmm. um, so yeah, uh, people finding ways to share their enjoyment of something in ways other than you know dumping a lot of cash uh for things it, i think is a beautiful thing if you can if you can if you can get this rare stuff if you can get the sears exclusive ground assault sure. dreadnought whatever thingy that's that's awesome and, and you know it kind of helps preserve those things too for future generations and if you put a camera in front of it you know more people can see it and enjoy it that's great but you don't have to do that not, you don't have to pick between can. that and paying rent for that week, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, not everybody can and not everybody wants to, and they don't have to. So, Steve, what were you going to jump in on with before? Oh, man. Well, it just related back to the appeal of the Alley Viper. Uh, I mean, the, the personal story I tell is uh, lining up for preschool one morning, and the kid in front of me pulls out this figure from his pocket, bright orange. I'm like, okay, what's the big deal? flips the visor right. up <laughs> and i'm like i did not know a toy that size could do that this is incredible so there's something there some magic there that anyone who experienced it for the first time at the right age uh, you know i, I don't want to keep hopping on this point but it really is a case of one man's trash mm -hmm. being one man's treasure one man's twilight being another man's sunrise like you know if you were coming into it these concepts were just mind-blowing but gentlemen uh my wife's giving me the look she needs oh, uh, a relief she needs to have her lunch while i i take a shift brian it's right. always a pleasure my friend so nice good to, to talk see to you steve we, we, we need to get together again soon oh we will yeah <laughs> and zay's dude thank you thank you for having me thank you for creating this forum thank you for cooking up such great topics Jeez, oh, dude. that's all right. Um, you're you know, you're yeah. a runaway success with this talk show thing, man. Oh, I wouldn't I wouldn't go that far. I still <laughs> here. I thought you were just the guy who put you know another sergeant slaughter figure in front of the camera. Hey, uh, but no, uh, man, yeah, look, I don't think I'm doing anything um, in in this capacity. I don't think I'm really doing anything that anyone else isn't already capable of doing. I appreciate the kind words. I still feel uneasy doing it, but I feel the more I do it, the more comfortable. I am becoming at it, but the the main I guess the main thing is uh, for me is I'm, I'm I love having conversations with people about similar similar interests and even if it's even if the interests are different, I like to have that sort of back and forth about um, you know why is that important to you and not necessarily important to anyone else. But yeah, thanks, Steve. It's uh, it's great to have you on. Say hi to the family for me. You bet, buddy. Thanks for having me. Goodbye, gents. You Goodbye, viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Adios. How do I do this now? Oh yeah, Fat I'll just kick Push you out. The <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So, like I said uh, very early on, uh, you were instrumental in me being able to find um, a lot of a lot of the figures um, that either I I had a fondness of, or and even some that. I'd maybe never, never seen in person. But able to watch your reviews um, really helped bring me back to to those to those days where um, you know you felt like a little kid again, and uh, everything was exciting. And uh, yeah, you're you're a staple in the in the Phoenix household. Um, if it, I do I do catch them when I can live when I can. 
and I always go back and, and rewatch um, particular episodes that, that are, you know, my favorite. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, it, it, the first thing I'll have, uh, I say is thank you, but, uh, and I'm glad that you're doing what you're doing. Uh, you are building something here. And I think you've discovered the first hard thing that a lot of people discover, you know, when they try to create is that, you know, it, it's, it, nobody's a, nobody's born doing this stuff. Nobody's born, you know, in front of a camera and making material. Right. You have to learn and it's, it's hard, uh, but it gets easier. And uh, I'm, I'm really happy to, to see you doing it. Uh, I look forward to seeing uh, your future. I, I look forward to oh, you keeping up with it. Um, and, I, and I hope you do it for a long time. I'll do it for as long as it's fun. Uh, yeah, I don't, um, I don't, I don't want to put any pressure on myself to get anything done. The last review, I did, I did all the reviews of uh, the Sergeant Slaughter figures and then uh, some of them I was happy with. Some of them I was like, oh, I'm not really, not too happy with it. But then I was just like, I'll shelve that for now. Maybe I'll revisit it later when it feels fun again. Um, I do a series called the Wrestling Championship, Slaughterhouse Wrestling Championship, which is like what um, the Joburg team do with their action figures where they, you know, they get them into exciting things. Mine's wrestling themed. I think if you if you want, check it out. I think you'll like some of the Joe aspects of it that I mingle in with the wrestling stuff. But it's... Um, that I also do when it's fun. So there, there, every every couple of months I'll get an inspiration to do another one, and I, I never push myself to do it if I'm not enjoying it. I'll just well, I'll. Well, hopefully you know, we can keep it fun for a while. Let's uh, I let's think keep so. the fun going. Well, that's what I, that's what I intend on doing. I think if it, if it gets to a point where it's not fun, I'll just have a break uh, and come back when it's fun again. But it's always fun talking to people about things that are you know they're passionate about. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm I'm very happy that you that you've come onto the show. I wasn't sure if you if you were going to. I'm just a lonely little guy that's uh, uh, slaughter specific, but um, I, well, I couldn't. This was a I couldn't lot of fun. Ask. I I mean, the topics were great. The conversation was great. And if you'd like to have me back, I'd love to be back. Oh, love to have you back. I'll we'll definitely do it again. Um, yeah, we'll just, we'll think of an appropriate topic and have you back. Probably. Hopefully before uh, Joe Fest, so we can we can talk a little bit more about what your plans are, uh, and and how far down the track you've uh, you've come along to in the planning of that, because that'll be exciting to hear. Yeah, we're we're gonna do our best, and uh, yeah, we're gonna you know it, it, as long as we can do it, knock on wood, um, we'll make it hopefully something special. In, and Joe in Fest this day and age, you just never know, like if. I mean, maybe this, maybe next year is going to be better. Maybe next year is going to be worse. You just don't yeah, know. That's right. Um, yeah. But if we can make it happen this year, we're going to try to make it something special. Oh, I look forward to, I, I mean, I'm not going to be able to make it there. Well, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's a little bit far for me. A little. But um, I will I will watch and uh, live vicariously through your experience. Uh, I've got no doubt that you are going to have uh, enough um fan support to get you there and then i'm sure once you are there you're going to have a a whole lot of fan support uh gathered around you uh, you you may find yourself with with barely a room to breathe i you know it, it's fine i just want to see everybody I, I i really miss it i i really do those were those were really some special times and um i think somebody else described it um as uh, described joe Con as being like a like a family reunion, you had a, a right. circle of friends that you would only see once a year, but every year, you know, you jo go to JoCon and there they are, and you connect as if you know, as if you just saw each other yesterday, and you know, it really was like that, um, yeah. and and I, I miss that. So uh, I think I think I think that's just what I need, and hopefully, you know. Hopefully we can make some new connections and hopefully we can bring new people in and um, uh, make sure they have a good time as well. It's um, it, it's it's pretty special. And I yeah, it's I'm ready. I'm really ready. What kind of stuff did you say you were going to have on your table? Well, I always have some original art, so yep. uh, I have I'll have some art for sale. Um, last time I had some secret code books because you know I did like the secret codes in some videos. Right. I, I don't think I have any of those printed up, uh, but I'm I may 
I may print some more of them. Um, I've got, I've still got some of my uh, HCC 788's Gold Head Brigade pins that I made for people. Cool. I may bring some of those, but I don't have a lot, a lot of those yet. But I'm kind of looking at like some other kind of exclusive things that I can have. Uh, I will have the um, the card for everyone to sign. And um, uh, so, yeah, I, I need to fill out the table a little bit more. And so I'm kind of trying to, I'm, I'm working on some ideas for that. I haven't 100% cool. nailed that down yet. Um, but in, in addition to that, um, I want to make sure that we have some way to just kind of get together, uh, probably after hours, because one thing I also learned from last time is that if I if you have a table, you're kind of anchored to that table. So right. um, it's really after the show that you can get out and go mingle with people. So at those times, I want to make sure that we have um, a, a time and place where we can, we can all get together and, and hang out. Um, it's... Um, yeah, I miss my friends. I want to see yeah. people. I want to make new cool. new friends. It's It's... Uh, yeah, it, um, but yeah, as far as the table, uh, there will be some exclusives there. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm still working on a couple ideas, but there will definitely be some original art there if uh, anybody's interested. Well, I'll need to get a Brian original Sergeant Slaughter fig, uh, picture if uh, if you're able able to uh, send something my way. Just uh, yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, I actually just picked up some art supplies uh, because I haven't drawn for quite a while. I need to get back into practice. I've got some other sketches that I need to do. So yeah, now's the time. Now's the time. Yeah. Pen pencil hand is 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 getting ready, limbering up. <laughs> Sweet. Well, I'll put my name down for a Brian original. All right. Can do. Awesome. Well, we'll leave it there then. Thank you very much for jumping on. Um, I, yeah, I look forward to watching your... Uh, the 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 Joe Fest quest, uh, and uh, I look forward to living living it through you, uh, and and all the other Joe fans that I'm sure that will be posting uh, videos and photos and uh, all sorts of great fun. And uh, I hope uh, whilst you're out there uh, catching up with old friends, I hope that you will consider me a new friend. Brian. Thank you, thank you, absolutely, I do, and thank you for having me on. It's been a lot of fun. All right, well, we'll leave it at that. Uh, you are uh, dismissed. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment down below.